Well, howdy there, everybody. I'm Argleflump, and this is Nancy Drew, Secret of Shadow Ranch. This is the game with the cowboys and the spooky green glowing ghost horse. Yeah, ghost dogs aren't as interesting as ghost horses. Yeah, horses are way cooler than dogs. Actually, I don't know. Dogs are pretty awesome. Welcome to my latest anyway, case, the anyway, of Shadow Ranch. Let's get started to start, with this or senior detective. fancy if mystery you're new to here. Games or need some I'm going to be playing on play Junior overview. Detective Mode. Dear Hannah, well, I made it to Shadow Ranch, but I'm afraid all is not well. Uh -oh. The Raleigh's, the people who own the ranch, have been called away on some kind of emergency. They had Dave Gregory, he's their foreman, pick me up at the airport. He gave me a phone number, told me to call the Raleigh's at that number as soon as I got settled in, and refused to tell me anything else. In fact, he barely said two words to me the whole ride to the ranch. What's worse, Bess and George aren't here yet, which is very strange, because even though we had to take different flights, we figured we'd get into Phoenix at about the same time. Being here without them feels odd. After all, the Raleigh's are their aunt and uncle, not mine. I wouldn't even be here if Bess and George hadn't begged them to invite me out to the ranch for two weeks, too. Until about three months ago, the Raleigh's owned a clothing store. Bess said it was always their dream to sell the store and buy a cattle ranch. I hope they're okay, but frankly, as beautiful as Shadow Ranch is, I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this place. Love, Nancy. Ooh, creepy! I'm having a bad feeling about this place. Well, it doesn't look so bad. But it's kind of weird that Bess and George aren't here, and neither are the Raleigh's, and the front porch is so broken! I can't- wait, how did I get inside if the front porch was broken? That's- that's a bit weird. Anyway, uh, we need to call the Raleigh's and figure out what's going on. No, let's call Bess! Let's see what Bess and George are up to. Hey Bess, hey George. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's me. I'm at the ranch. Where are you guys? Omaha. Omaha, Nebraska? Omaha? As in Nebraska? Our plane had to land here so they could fix some radio problem, and now they're saying... It's Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, George. Now they're saying we may be here for hours. Oh, man, that's the worst. The last time I was on a plane, they delayed the flight by 12 hours. Ugh, it was terrible. And, you know, it wouldn't have been so bad if they told us right away, hey, by the way, it's going to take 12 hours. But they're like, oh, don't worry, we'll be up in the air in 30 minutes. Oh, no, it's going to be another 30 minutes. No, it's going to be another two hours. Then another two hours. A a and then they brought out the really mean person to do the announcements. So, yeah, yeah, it it's like, I wish they just canceled it outright or just told us at the very beginning, Hey, it's going to be 12 hours, because then I wouldn't have to have spent all day long at the airport, which seems to be what Bess and George are having to deal with. Well, at least they didn't cancel the flight. Yet. I mean, who knows what's really going on? Yeah, no one around here ever gives you a straight answer. So what's going on there? That is a very good question. Oh my gosh, you've got a mystery to solve, don't you? I can hear it in your voice. What's happened? Tell us. All I know so far is, the Raleigh's sent one of their ranch hands to pick me up at the airport, instead of meeting my plane themselves. That is weird. Yeah, that doesn't sound like Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet at all. Are they there at the ranch? Nope. The ranch hand who picked me up told me I could reach them at this phone number he gave me. So what'd they say? I haven't called them yet. So call them! Yeah, and as soon as you do, call us. We're so bored. George just bought a book on 19th century clothing and accessories. George did? It's the only thing in the bookstore here that looked halfway interesting. So if you need to know anything that's even remotely related to 19th century fashion, let us know, okay? Sounds good to me. In the meantime, call Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet. I mean, not only have you got our curiosity going, but we're bored, Nancy. Bored! I hear ya. I'll talk to you soon, okay? You better. <laughs> I wonder if the cousins practice saying things at the exact same time, because that's not the first time they've spoken in unison. And hey, guess what? Nancy got a new phone in this game. Looks like it's a flip phone, according to this picture. That's cool. Alrighty. Okay, so we've got stuff about teaspoons and tablespoons. I could actually use one of these for my 
for my <laughs> for my uh, kitchen because you know I always see things that's like okay two cups of flour and then 19 tablespoons of salt and then three ounces of chocolate and it's like I don't know what any of those things are so that that would actually be really really super de duper useful and hey guess what itch shorty the cook hey you must be Nancy I'm the cook shorty Thurmond welcome to Shadow Ranch come on over here and tell me about yourself you have talked to the Raleigh's right uh not really is that important? I promised the Raleigh's I wouldn't talk to you until after they did. Really? Why are the Raleigh's being so super secretive? I just wanted to look around a little first. Do you have any idea how hard it is to have an interesting conversation with those two guys out there? It's impossible. So call the Raleigh's, then come right back. All right, all right, okay, fine. Let's actually call the Raleigh's. The game really wants me to do it. Oh, let's call the sheriff. Oh, come on, sheriff. Sheriff, come on. You've got to talk to me. I've got important things to say. Not really. Let's just call the Raleigh's. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Raleigh. It's Nancy Drew. Nancy! Are you at the ranch? Yes, and I'm a little concerned that you're not. Is everything all right? Oh, everything's fine. I mean, it is now. It wasn't last night, of course. Everything would have been fine last night if you hadn't made such a fuss. Well, how could I not make a fuss? There was a rattlesnake in our bedroom, for Pete's sake. Oh, no! Rattlesnake! Did you say rattlesnake? I told Ed to leave it alone and let one of the hands get it out of there, but no, Ed started poking at it with my yardstick, and all of a sudden it leapt up and bit him. How bad? Well, his arm swelled up something awful, and he was feeling pretty poorly by the time we finally got him here. I was fine. She's exaggerating. Oh, Ed, you wish. Anyway, dear, he's doing much better today, and the doctors think he'll be well enough to go home in a day or so. I'm well enough to go home right now. No, you're not. If I don't stay here with him, he'll get up and walk right out that door. All right, so the, so the Raleigh's are going to be stuck in the hospital for the entire game. Would you rather that Bess and George and I postpone our visit? Oh, good heavens, no. I won't hear of it. You're going to go on as if none of this ever happened. You just go get a horse from Tex. He's the head wrangler. And go riding to your heart's content. I told Shorty to go ahead with the cookout I planned for tonight and... The envelope. Have her take that envelope to Mary. Oh, good idea. There's an envelope in the roll-top desk in the den marked Mary. If you could ride over to Mary Yazzie's and give it to her, we'd really appreciate it. Um, okay. I'll do it right away. Did you say I'd have to ride there? Because of the way the roads are set up around here, it takes longer to drive to her place from the ranch than it does to get there on horseback. Dave will tell you how to get there. She's gonna have to get the key to the desk from him, too. Oh, that's right. I always lock the roll top. Dave has the key. Oh, dear. It seems like there was something else I wanted to tell you. The horse, bed. Tell her about the phantom horse. Did he say phantom horse? Yes. You see, last night we... Hello, Mr. Raleigh. Time for those tests. Uh-oh. We have to go. Don't worry about us, dear. You just go have fun. Just be sure to wear a hat and drink plenty of water. It's gonna be another hot one. Bye! No, wait. Just tell me about the... Phantom horse? Phantom horse? How mysterious! All right, so we need to... What was it? Talk to Dave in order to get the key to the roll top desk. So let's talk to Dave right now. Here he is. He is just hanging around the chicken coop. You talk to the Raleigh's? Yep. Yes, I'm supposed to go ahead and have a good time and not worry about Ed, which is a lot easier said than done. He'll be okay. Getting bit by a rattler's no picnic, but it sounds like he's out of the woods. How do you think that snake got into their room? Probably crawled in through a mouse hole sometime during the day and took a nap. Nighttime's when they're most active. Something the Raleigh's found out the hard way. What if it's sabotage? Could somebody have put it there? Guess it's possible. Person would have to know how to handle snakes, of course, but then if you work in the desert, that's one of the things that's good to know. Guess you're gonna be asking me a lot of questions, huh? I'll, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, am I bugging you? The Raleigh said you were a detective. 
I'm a pretty awesome detective, yeah. Amateur detective is just kind of a hobby. I'm gonna be honest with you, ma'am. We were short a couple hands to begin with, and now with the Raleigh's gone and everybody on edge over what happened last night, well, this is not a good time to be visiting Shadow Ranch, that's all. I appreciate your honesty, but it's not like I purposely planned to take a vacation here when bad things were happening. The Raleigh's asked me to take something out to Mary Yazzie's, but it's in the den in the roll-top desk, which is locked. They said you had the key? Sure do. They gave me their key ring at the hospital. Great, thanks. Thanks, Dave. To get to Mary's shop, just follow the trail that goes northeast out of the corral. Can't miss it. And I should probably warn you, she doesn't like the Raleigh's. Why not? No idea. Not really any of my business. <laughs> Somebody's pointing out, yeah, Nancy's detective work is just a hobby. She's gotten at least 10 people arrested at this point, right? It's more than just a hobby. I talked to my friends, Bess and George. Their plane's been delayed. They aren't sure when they're going to get here. Sorry to hear that. Well, to be honest, I'm not, really. Driving back and forth to the airport takes a lot of time, and time's one thing we're all running kind of short of around here. I'll let you get back to work. Take care. It does seem kind of strange that they didn't wait at the airport for Bess and George's plane. That's what I would have done, because I'm a nice person that way. But hey, maybe it's just me. Alrighty, so let's go back inside. We're gonna get that thing from the roll top desk right here. Hmm. It's a letter. So yeah, you might notice this game has a different interface than the, the previous game. We've got a new larger window. That's nice. But uh, we also have to, we have an inventory now. So previously the inventory was in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. But now it's on a separate screen. I kind of like that. And then at the same time, I kind of don't. Because I, I kind of don't. Because I have to pick up an item. I mean, I have to constantly open and close the inventory screen. That's just kind of a pain for me. But maybe I'm just lazy. Okay. And a rally. Just because you fired me, don't make another mistake and think that you've heard the last of me. Because you haven't. We all know that I deserved the second chance. Letting me go without giving me one was just plain wrong. In fact- Sounds like this Jane Nash person has it out for the Raleigh's. You know what your problem is? You don't believe in justice. But see, I do. That's the way my brother and I were raised. Justice always prevails. Although sometimes it needs a little help. You'll see. Jay Nash. Alrighty. Hmm. The Raleigh sold a trunk full of junk to Mary Yazzie. Oh man, bunch of uh, trunk junk. Eighty-five dollars of trunk junk. We're gonna see that at some point. Oh, hey, the the little envelope there on the right. You'll notice it it, it disappears when I pick up the. <laughs> The, uh, bill of sale. Anyway, totally getting distracted. Sorry about that. So we've got the letter that we're gonna give to Mariazzi. Oh, wait. I needed to pick up another thing. Hmm. I think there were, like, a key ring, uh, or circles, or something. Almost forgot. Here. Those things. That's for uh, a puzzle. This puzzle right over here. So we've got red, blue, and yellow. Those are going to correspond with the colors right over here. Not here. Hmm. Well, where is red, blue, and yellow? It's here, right? That's not the right time. Must be broken. Red is 12. Yellow is 7. Alrighty. So now let's see it. Red, 12. Yellow, 7. 12, yellow, 7. I'll see if I can remember this. Red is at 12 o'clock. Yellow is going to be at 7. So this is 6, 7. And then blue is going to be whatever the last one is. There we go. Hey, hey, we solved the puzzle very, very quickly. Oh, and here's another puzzle. We want to make these things match. 
No, that's not it at all. We want to press the button so they all press down. Oh, come on. 8, 10, 2, 6, 12, 4, done. And hey, we got half of a picture of Sheriff Merrill Humber and Francis, his daughter. This doesn't look like it was ever opened. Sadly, uh, Francis never, never got this, uh, letter. So let's just open it. Yeah, let's just steal this. As usual, things did not work out like I planned. Just when I get everything fixed just right for you to go looking for the thing I hid for you, I go and get myself arrested. But no matter what you hear, nothing is gonna happen to me. I will be fine and we will be together soon, I promise. Meanwhile, you can keep busy by looking for what I hid. Start by using this piece of paper to mark where all the rock pictures are. They will tell you what to do next. Your favorite flowers and the flowers on your favorites, start keeping them in mind too. I will leave a message for you in this here cell, just in case they decide to move me to the jail down in Tumbleweed or something. So yeah, guess what? Dirk Valentine set up a really cool scavenger hunt. We've got all sorts of puzzles here. Yeah, so uh, the flowers on the favorites, uh, the rock pieces, and the jail cell message. Those are all puzzles we're going to have to solve. I like vexing your brain, because when you are thinking real hard, like when you're playing the piano, you are more beautiful than anything in the world. I am sure to be out of here before you find my treasure, but in case I am not, know that it is all yours, and that you are more precious to me than 10,000 treasures put together. Nine. 12, 15, 22, 5, 25, 15, 21. Dirk. P.S. I do not and never will hold what your father did to me against you. Aww. I, I really like, he, he says, I like vexing your brain because when you're thinking real hard, you're more beautiful than anything in the world. He just likes really smart girls. All right. Oh, 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 man. Okay, I almost missed the diary. Almost missed this diary. July 4th, 1882. Got swore in as sheriff. It was the 4th, so it's like all them celebrations was for me. Which, of course, they weren't. Francis thought up a song and played it on the piano for me. I forget how it went, but it was pretty. I'm lucky to have her for a daughter. Herford Shoup come by with a plant he brung from New York, which he calls Harrison's Yellow. <laughs> Looked right dead to me, but Francis planted it out back and gave it some water, and already it looks to be on the mend. She's 17 and can read and write good and knows her numbers. Herford's thinking to marry her, but I said she ain't of that mind yet. All right, so uh, Nancy's here on vacation. She's here to visit her... Um, her... Wait, go. Bess and George's aunt and uncle. Bess and George were on vacation. They just invited Nancy along. They should have after the after the disaster of the previous vacation that George, you know, in the previous game, George tried to set Nancy up on a nice vacation on the evil Deception Island. With a name like Deception Island, how could it not have turned evil? Seriously? March 30th, 1883. Francis has got eyes for a young man named Dirk. She says he's from Prescott. Cappy says when she plays the piano, this Dirk makes everyone be quiet so he can hear her good. I ain't never seen her smile like she smiles now. I told her to bring him to the ranch for dinner, but she says he won't come because he is too shy. I wonder if that is the truth. April 16th, 1883. Got a letter from the sheriff over in Phoenix about this Dirk Valentine who was wanted for robbing two banks in a stagecoach picture with the letter looked just like Dirk, who Francis is sweet on. When I showed her the picture, she got tearful and run off. Now, Dirk is gone, and she won't say nothing about where he went. Oh, see, it's a tragic love story. Dirk Valentine set off a really cool scavenger hunt for his gorgeous, very smart cutie, but unfortunately, her daddy was the sheriff. August 2nd, 1883. Dirk Valentine is robbing banks and coaches and trains all over the territory. 
Francis says he never ever shoots his gun and only steals from people that already got plenty of money. But that ain't true, because some of them trains he robbed was carrying money, meant to pay miners a hard-earned wages. He is nothing but a no-good, greedy outlaw. But Francis gets real mad when I say that. I fear she is still sweet on him, and that she sees him when she knows I am busy, and gets letters from him which she hides from me. September 9th, 1883. Got hold of a note Francis sent to Dirk and saw what they was going to meet. So I got a posse and we caught Dirk and now he's in jail. The judge is coming next week and I hear he is a hanging judge, so Dirk most likely ain't long for this world. Francis won't say nothing to me no more and says she never will again. That is kind of sad. She was expecting to meet her boyfriend, but her dad intercepted the note and arrested her boyfriend. September 13th, 1883. Dirk sent a secret letter to Francis, which Mason got hold of and gave to me. I locked it up so she won't ever read it. Francis ain't allowed to see Dirk in jail, of course, and if she never sees his letter, maybe she will think he don't like her no more, and, and maybe she will stop liking him. Francis's ma would have known what to do better than me. I wish she was still alive. September 17th, 1883. They hung Dirk at noon. I thought I would be glad, but I ain't. September 18th, 1883. Francis took Brownie in my big saddlebag and is gone. She ain't told no one where she's going, not even Cappy. But I know she will forget Dirk, and when she does, she will come home because she's a smart gal and will figure out that I, I did what I'd done for her. January 4th, 1884. My sister says her little girl Ellie got a letter that said Francis went east and is not of a mind to ever return. I hope this ain't the truth because I miss her something awful. June 11th, 1884. The Harrison's yellow, which Francis said was her favorite flower in the world, is brown sticks now. I don't know how to look after delicate things like that, so it is my fault that it died. No, that's, that's really sad, because it's like a metaphor for his relationship with his own daughter. It's dead now, because he doesn't know how to take care of delicate things. I ain't seen or heard from Francis in a year. I tell people she's on her way home, but when I look in my heart, I know this is a lie. She will never come back to Shadow Ranch. It's my fault. I would just have to find a way to live with it. This is extra sad because we've got those tear marks all over this. It, it's just sad. Wow. I ain't seen or heard from Francis. It would be great if uh, the other Nancy Drew games, like this one, had people read old letters out loud. Specifically, Message in a Haunted Mansion had a bunch of old letters, which were impossible to read. They were in really small cursive. So I, I would have loved having, having, you know, uh, those letters read out loud. Okay, so let's meet Shorty here. Let's meet Shorty. After that really tragic, sad backstory, let's meet Shorty, the funny short guy. Tell me you've called the Rawleys. I have, and I still can't believe what happened to Ed. That is creepy, isn't it? But the horse, that was even creepier. See, I was just about to crawl into bed last night, when all of a sudden, this glowing horse comes galloping up outside. It stops and rears and paws, whinnying and snorting. Then it just wheels around and gallops off into the night. It was Dirk Valentine's horse, you know. Now it's a phantom. Wait, who's the phantom, Dirk or the horse? A phantom horse? Dirk Valentine was an outlaw around here back in the 1880s. Legend has it he was in love with Frances Humber. She lived right here on Shadow Ranch. Unfortunately, her daddy was the sheriff. Well, I already know the ending to the story, but I'll act like I don't. Something tells me this story does not have a happy ending. Because of him, Valentine was captured and eventually hanged. Ever since, the ghost of his horse has been roaming the desert, cursing whoever sees him with bad luck. You don't really believe that, do you? All I know is, Ed Raleigh sees the horse, and what happens less than two minutes later? He gets bit by a rattlesnake. You do the math. Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. So the phantom horse made him get bitten by hey, a rattlesnake? Hey, you're crowding me here, Nancy. I need elbow room when I cook. Sorry. 
You don't need no elbow room, shorty. Just stir with your left hand. Hey, you crowding me here, Nancy. I need elbow room when I cook. Sorry. I don't know what he's cooking, but I'm, I'm sure it doesn't require that much work. Anyway, let's go right into Mary Yazzie's. I'm sure Tex is a very friendly horse man who will help us out, give us a horse in no time flat. So which one are you? Excuse me? The Raleigh said they were going to be inviting some young ladies out here. I take it you're one of them. Yes, I'm Nancy Drew. And you are? I'm the head wrangler. You want to ride, you come to me. You prove to me you know what you're doing, I may just let you. Oh, well, it doesn't look like he's friendly after all. Hey, uh, hey Tex, so did you see that phantom horse last night? Did you see the phantom horse last night? I saw something. Just what? I still ain't sure. Now if you want to ride, listen up. First thing you're gonna do is never ride unless you're wearing a hat and gloves. And unless you got a full canteen of water, you can wear that hat over there. It's Mrs. Raleigh's. Got a helmet built right in. Her gloves are on the saddle you'll be using. And you can get a canteen from Shorty. Then you're gonna saddle and bridle your horse. No need to brush them. I do that when I bring them in. Then you're gonna lead them to the mountain block in the corral and mount up. Then I'm gonna ask you some questions. You can't ride outside the corral till you get all the answers right. Yeah, so we have to solve his little horse quiz before we can go riding. If I don't know something, can I just ask you? Nope. When you're done riding, you're gonna dismount, hook your horse up, take the saddle and bridle off and put him back where you got him. Always keep your gloves with your saddle. Which horse would you like me to ride? The bay over there. Name's Bob. If you get off when you're on the trail, don't tie your reins to nothing. Just drop them. And barring an earthquake or something, old Bob will stay put. Do you know anything about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid for his sweetheart? Nope. Eh, somehow I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. May I go riding now? Nope. With the Raleigh's gone, the ranch is real short-handed. Before you ride, you're gonna have to go see if Shorty's got any chores that need doing. Gotta get a canteen from him anyway. Don't feel like doing no chores today. Talk to you later. No hurry. So... Tex says we're gonna have to do some tours. Well, hello there. You got some friends back there? Ooh, hey, horsies. Clyde and Bob. Hi there. You two aren't too shabby looking either. Hi, Ace. Okay, but I get to ride Bob. Bob's the cool one. He's my horse of horse. Alrighty, so, Shorty, you got any chores you need me to do? Hey there, Nancy. Man, I wish the Raleigh's were here. Me too. It'll be nice to talk to them in person. I'm really looking forward to you and me sitting down and having a nice conversation. Especially with all the weird stuff that's going on. I'm so busy getting all their chores done in addition to my own that I barely have time to talk to myself, let alone to you. Enough of me complaining. What's up? Tex said I should get a canteen from you and see if there are any chores you'd like me to do. Music to my ears. First thing you can do for me is go out to the garden and pick all the ripe vegetables. You know what ripe vegetables look like, don't you? No, I don't. So I can't do this chore, and you shouldn't make me do it. No, but don't worry, I'll find out. Good, because if you pick vegetables that aren't ripe yet, I'll be real ticked. You can put them in the vegetable basket that's hanging outside. And one more thing. Sometime today, I need you to build a cooking fire in the pit outside. I'll light it when I'm ready to start cooking. And be sure to fill the bucket out there with water and leave it by the pit. You know, just in case something catches on fire that isn't supposed to. The Raleigh's wanted to have a cookout tonight, and by golly, we're gonna have a cookout no matter who is or isn't here. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Yeah. That's just terrible. I really don't like that chore puzzle. And we have to do it. Okay, we need to figure out which ones are ripe. I shouldn't pick any vegetables until I have something to put them in. Oh, yeah, I guess I guess that's right. Oh, we're going to need to pick up those random pieces of sticks, which are just lying around everywhere. Oh, and we can solve this puzzle, too. I think I can do this. Yeah, here we go. I need to stand here and hit it at this angle. <sighs> Ah. All right, 
Alright, so this one looks like I'm standing center, but far away. And then I'm gonna hit it from this angle. <laughs> okay, I'll hit it like super de duper hard. Whew. Okay. We, we've got this. We are great at splitting wood. Looks like it's the upper right corner, and I just hit it straight on. There. Just call me Nancy Paul Bunyan Drew. Woohoo! I'm a real Paul Bunyan, I am! Nancy making up silly nicknames for herself. I like it. Just call me Nancy Silly Nickname Drew. What's this? Wonder who wrote this? Weird secret notes. Oh, I think I need some water for that too. Let's get some water for that. I'd much rather build the fireplace than pick vegetables, because picking vegetables is gonna be terrible. Woohoo! Well, that's that's nice, that's nice. This looks nice too. Clearly no hidden passageways inside this particular shed. And a water pump which will be working fine for decades. Yes, yes, I like that indeed. I think there's some more wood, um, not here. Here, here it is. Do I have enough batches of wood? To start a fire. I don't know. I also can I'm also gonna need some newspaper. Newspaper's gonna be here. Bank robbers? There are bank robbers in the area! Oh no! Okay, that's enough of uh that's enough of that. That's enough newspaper. Let's see. This must be where Shorty wants me to build a campfire. Not yet. Do I not have enough sticks? Do I use these things first? So far, so good. Okay, those things first. That should do it. Then all the sticks. And all the firewood. There. One extremely well-built campfire, if I do say so myself. Great looking fire, Nancy. Nice job. Yeehaw. So, I am also going to put this down. Because I've got a bucket of water. Excellent. Excellent. Now, now for the vegetable picking. Which is terrible. All right, Romano, Old Ivory, and Northern Lights. You need to use Nancy's phone, the internet browser, and, ooh, Harrison's Yellow. Oh, I was trying to click on the Harrison's Yellow, but that's okay, I, I won't do that. Looking for Romano, which is a type of bean, right? So here we go, uh, which one's ripe? So the beans on the middle are ripe. So those, those green beans are ripe. Now let's look for the old ivory egg. A uh, beef stick is red when ripe. That's pretty easy. Northern lights are bicolored. Ivory is golden. Well, none of those look golden to me. So I'm just going to take these. Those are ripe Romanos. And the northern lights were the <laughs> bicolored, right? Or was that beef steak? No, beef steak's just red. Golden, let's see, those are golden. And then black turtle are uh, those. Let's go with it's this. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Shorty, did I get the veggies? Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Oh no, you got stuff in here that isn't wrapped yet. Picking stuff before it's wrapped is a waste of perfectly good food. So don't do it again, you hear? Sorry. Now, second thing I need you to do for me is take this, go out to the chicken coop and fill it up with eggs. Just be careful of that basket. It's kind of old. Okay, well, I did make a mistake, but I didn't get a game over. So, success? Success. Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. 
Shorty. He's like, hey, you picked stuff that wasn't ripe yet. I told you outright I don't know what ripe vegetables look like. What on earth were you expecting? Whatever. Let's get some eggs. I don't see any eggs here. There is not an egg to be found. Here are some eggs. Oh no! No! There's a hole in it. Oh, egg salad sandwich. We've got a broken basket. So this is a, a puzzle. What we need to do is rotate these things and put them into place wherever they may go. I think that one was good. It's really hard to tell. It's not that hard to tell, but it is kind of hard to tell. All right, so this has smaller things facing down, so there. And then this is kind of smaller, but it's got big blocks, so here. Nice. And then what about this? Yeah, that looks good. Hey, this is not as bad. This isn't so bad. I've got it. I, I, I'm beautiful. I've got this. one here. Whoops, looks like that one was there. a minor mistake. Am I good or what? Just call me Nancy Basket Weaver Drew. Okay, and now call me Nancy Sewer Mix Sew Pants Drew. Because I did so good on that puzzle. Ow! Hey ow! Ow! Yikes! Maybe I'll come back when she's not in such a foul mood. The chicken of doom. Yeah. Sorry, forgot that chicken attacks you. There's an evil chicken here, and it's gonna scratch my face. It's gonna peck and claw me and give me hurts all over the place. It's an evil, evil chicken, and it is kind of a disgrace. No, 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 I guess I'd better go back in. You can find more eggs than that. Wait, what? I can? How do you know I can find more eggs than that unless you've checked, Shorty? Did Shorty go to the, the hen house, or what? I don't know, let's see. Did the chicken of doom leave an egg? Yeah, that's what we were waiting for. The chicken of doom's egg. I don't see any more eggs. Is that enough eggs, Shorty? I, I think I found all the eggs I can find. Maybe Shorty just thinks you need to get at least six eggs every day. Maybe? I don't know. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. Anything I can do for you now? I want the water. That's the only reason I wanted water. Do you think I could get a canteen of water from you? Got one right here. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. Yep, all right. So does Shorty ever cook something with eggs? That is a good question. I think maybe he cooks breakfast with eggs? Maybe. Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? Hey Dave, how's it going? I found a letter that may have been written by Dirk Valentine to Francis Humber way back in the 1880s. What do you know about them? I know there's a painting of her over in the ranch house, and that's about it. Why? What'd the letter say? It suggested that Dirk had buried something very valuable around here. Well, if the guy did hide something, it's probably long gone by now. How long have you worked here? About as long as the Raleigh's have lived here. About three months, I guess. I was their first hire. First me, then Tex, then Shorty. That Shorty sure likes to talk, doesn't he? He does his job and he does it good. Far as I'm concerned, that's all that's important. I'll let you get back to work. Ma'am? Yeah, I'll stop bothering you, sir. You just keep hanging out with those chickens. I think that's the only thing he's doing. Yeah. Just hang out with those chickens all day long. So hey Tex! Hey Tex, how's it going? 
Need something? Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. Whoops, selected the wrong option. Need something? May I go writing now? Yep, if you got everything I told you you need, and you think you know your stuff when it comes to horses, old Bob's all yours. Talk to you later. If you last that long. Yeah. So who's cooler, Dave or Tex? It's hard to tell. I think people prefer Dave, though. I do like the way Dave... Dave, is, Dave has a really friendly voice, whereas, uh... Poor Tex. He sounds like he's secretly plotting to attack me in the middle of the night. Uh, like, ooh. All right, Nancy. You need to saddle up your horse and then go out here for some riding. Come time. on, Bob. <laughs> oh. I better try that again. I didn't tighten the thingamabobber quickly enough. Come on, Bob. I mean, tightly enough. I don't know horse things, okay? I'm going to do terribly on this horse quiz. <laughs> I'm ready. Ready for some questions? I think so. Where's the horse's hocks? I, um, on its nose. Just below its knees. Nope. Darn. Ask me something else. Where's the horse's frog? I, what, frogs? Like, horses and frogs are totally different animals. Between its ears. Nope. Uh, Ask me something else. How tall is a horse that's 15 hands? Four feet. Nope. Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? A paint horse. Nope. Ask me something else. How can you tell if a horse is colicking? It keeps lying down, then standing up. That's one out of ten. Woohoo! I got one right. I just selected the first option every single time. I knew eventually I would get one right. Oh, fortunately, people in the live stream chat know the answers to these questions. They say foot, like bottom of hoof, and then five feet, and a uh, gated horse. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? Why does Nancy need to know this information in order to go horseback riding? A chestnut is light brown. Nope. Ask me something else. What tribe bred the first Appaloosas? The Nez Pierce. Two out of ten. Got a long way to go. Ask me something else. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Its ears. Nope. Ask me something else. What part of the saddle should you always check before you head out on the trail? That thing that I just fell off on. The cinch. Three down, seven to go. Ask me something else. What is a mule? The offspring of a male horse and a female donkey. Nope. Oh. Ask me something else. Where is a horse's hocks? Okay, um... Hooves? Just above its hooves. Nope. Ask me oh. something else. Where is a horse's frog? That is the hoof. On the bottom of its hoof. That's four right. Ask me something else. How tall is a horse that's 15 hands? Okay, chat said five feet. Five feet. That's five. You're halfway there. I'm halfway there. Woohoo! Ask me something else. What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? Gated. A gated horse. Bingo. That was number six. Ask me something else. What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? A bay has black points. Seven down, you're in the home stretch. Ask me something else. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? It's back. Nope. Darn. Ask me something else. What is a mule? No, it's the other really long option. The offspring of a female horse and a male donkey. Eight right, just two to go. Ask me something else. Where's a horse's hocks? Back legs? On its back legs. This here's your final question. I'm ready. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Its stomach. Nope. Ask me something else. What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? Its feet. Well, you answered all the questions right. And I can tell by the way you sit, you ain't gonna go falling off for no good reason. So you're free to ride outside the corral. Just don't go galloping all over the place. Because if you bring old Bob back all hot and sweaty, you can kiss your cowgirl days at Shadow Ranch goodbye. I'm a pretty cool cowgirl, actually. Anyway, okay, hey, Bob, we did it. What do you say we do some sightseeing? We managed to solve the puzzle through a lot of guessing, but we did solve the puzzle correctly, maybe? I hope. 
Yeah, you answered them right on the 40th try, so I guess you're trustworthy. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing here. So here is Mary Ozzy. Everybody say hello to Mary. Hi, can I help you? Hi, are you Mary Yazi? That's me. I didn't hear a car. Did you hike in or come by horse? Bob brought me. He's a horse. My name's Nancy. So where are you staying? With Ed and Elizabeth Raleigh. In fact, I have something for you. Bet wanted me to give you this. Great. I want to buy a small piece of property from them. It must be their response. Bad news? They rejected my offer. Well, I guess that's that. But as long as you're here, look around. All the jewelry you see, all the rugs, the beadwork, the pottery, they were all made by local artists, including yours truly. So if you want to know something, especially if you want to know how much something is, just ask. Hmm, sounds great. Are there many petroglyphs around here? If you take the trail to Cougar Bend, there are hundreds. A lot of them were probably made by the Anasazi. They lived in the area until about 700 years ago, when they just suddenly picked up and left. I understand that you bought a trunk full of junk from the Raleigh's recently. Yeah, they didn't want much for it, so I took it off their hands. Problem is, I still don't know what's in it because I can't figure out how to open it. May I take a look at it? Sure, it's right over there. It was great talking to you. Ride safely. Alrighty, I like Mary. She was a fun what a character. beautiful horse. Alrighty, and this is the trunk. That trunk looks really old. Would you mind if I tried to get this open? Please do. In fact, if you get it open, I'll let you keep something from it. You can have your pick. This is a puzzle. We don't have the solution to the puzzle yet, but the solution to the puzzle is here when we call this woman. She will tell us what the solution to the puzzle is. Oh, and we have this puzzle, too. Oh, man, I'm not good at this puzzle, but somebody who made these games really, really likes this puzzle. Because we have this puzzle in game number five. It was called Bee's Knees. That was in the final scene. We also have it in game number 14 with the Dodo Box. And that was in, uh, what's it called? Danger by Design, that's the name of that game. Uh oh, I think I'm stuck. So I'm trying to be a good road runner and not get caught by coyotes. I just got caught by one. Looks like I have to go down, because going up really wasn't a good option there. But then I... Wait, wait. I got myself unstuck. I think this is... This is a weird one where I have to go like left and right. And I'm purposely luring this one coyote down. Oh no! That wasn't it. Yeah, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I, yeah, I do it like this. I purposely lure the right coyote to the left, and then I'm just gonna go down... I mean, up and around, not down and around. And done. <laughs> this puzzle is way cool. better... an old token. Or something. Definitely way better than trying to... <laughs> to find vegetables. Definitely. Definitely. Bunch of pictures. Tuning forks. Cool. All right, so let's go outside and call Charlena Purcell for the solution to the puzzle here. Charlena Purcell's office. 
Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Miss Purcell? It's concerning. I'm staying at a ranch in central Arizona, and since she knows so much about the history of Arizona, I thought maybe she could answer some questions for me. Questions concerning? Well, I came across a very old trunk that might contain stuff that has to do with these people named Dirk Valentine and Francis Humber. Only I can't open it. Did you say Dirk Valentine? And his girlfriend, Francis Humber, yes. Huh. Oh, would you hold, please? Thank you for holding, and thank you for calling the office of Charlena Purcell. Miss Purcell's latest novels, like Wind Through My Heart, was an instant bestseller. And like so many of her novels, it recently received the Catherine Coop Award for Historical Excellence. Reading a Charlena Purcell novel is like traveling through time to the Old Southwest on the wings of love. This is Charlena. Who is this again? Uh, Nancy Drew? Tell me about the trunk you found. Well, the lock seems to have something to do with this image that's engraved on the trunk right above it. Describe the image. It's this kind of abstract design made up of hearts and doves and the initials E-H and A-H. E-H would be Eldridge Humber and A-H would be Abigail Humber. Frances Humber's grandparents on her father's side. Her mother died when she was ten. Now, the picture no doubt commemorates their wedding day, which was... 4-9-11. April 9th, 1811. I love how she has all this information memorized. Thank you, Miss Expert. So, 4, 9, and 11. Those are the directions those wrenches need to be in. Why do you know so much about the Humbers? I've been running across fascinating tidbits concerning the Humber family and stashing them away for years. When I have enough tidbits stashed away, I may well write a book about them. Then you'd probably be very interested to know what's in this trunk. Yes, I would. And since I've helped you, or tried to, it's only fair that you help me, don't you think? Sure, I'll keep you posted. Did I mention that I'm staying at Shadow Ranch? This just gets better and better. I'll tell my assistant to put your calls through immediately. By the way, why are you so interested in the Humbers? Knowing more about them and what happened in the past may help me figure out something that's going on in the present. I'm kind of a detective. That makes two of us. I'll be waiting to hear from you. It'd be nice if Nancy, I don't know, told her about that secret letter or that journal she found. Like, that's definitely a love story that this romance author would love to hear about. So, 4 9 11, let's do this. Oh, ah. Here we go. 4 9. I got the trunk open! Great, thank you. Go ahead and take something from it. You deserve a reward. Scissors, that would be cool. I don't know, is all this stuff together worth $85? Hmm, I mean, we do have the cool sheriff's badge. Can I take a look at it? It might be if an I authentic. something else in the trunk, I should put back what I took before. Might be an authentic sheriff's badge, actually. That that actually could be worth like eighty-five dollars. Let's check this out. I wonder how you open this. We open it with the chain from the other watch. Bingo! This is Francis's watch. Same sort of puzzle we had earlier. We want to press the buttons in the correct order. Nine seven five nine seven three. 9, 7, 11, 10, 9, 7, 11, 5, 3, 9, 7, 11, 5, 1, 3, done. Green bottle under, hmm, wonder what that means. It's only half of the picture. What, what the green bottle under where? Hi, can I help you with something? Is that you riding that beautiful Palomino in the picture over there? That's my horse, Banner. I train him myself. What else can he do? Anything I ask. He and I are both pretty talented. She's got an awesome horse. I won something that looks like a token when I played that game over there. What is it? They actually used those for something back in the 1880s, but I don't know what. It was great talking to you. Thanks for stopping by. So... Does this game ever say whether or not Mariazzi is 
Native American because I feel like she's supposed to be a Native American character. I don't think they say it outright or not, but I think she is. So we have the trail stop. We, we basically have... What do you call them? These things. The arrowheads. We need Heck, to pick why up... walk when I can ride? We need to pick up arrowheads. Let's see. Uh, are there three of them here? Here lies Charlie. Best mule would ever live. Never kicked me or nothing. Rip January 1881. January is a very hard word to spell, definitely. Oh, and there's a rattlesnake. We don't want to mess with that rattlesnake. Yeah. Well, I do like the zebra rock. I think that's what the uh, rattlesnake is hiding under. Okay, we found all four Heck, of... why walk when I can ride? All four of the arrowheads there. And we can go to Cougar Bend, but I don't think I'm going to. Somebody's saying that um, Yazi is a common last name uh, for the Navajo. So that, that's kind of like an indication that she's Native American. I believe we are gonna... I mean, at the end of the game, we reach some like Native American cliff, dwe cliff, cliff dwellings at the end of the game. It's gonna be cool. It's a cool location. Uh-oh. I'd and better put that back. What's this? Texas getting a letter from Jane Nash. Happy birthday! Oh my gosh, Jane Nash is Texas' sister. I can't believe I've got a real-life cowboy for a brother. Your little sister, Jane. You still here? You sound surprised. You and your friends, if they ever show up, you ain't gonna last more than three days out here. They well, I hope you like surprises, Tex, because you're in for one. City folk can't take living out here. Too rugged, too much work, too dangerous. I understand you have a sister named Jane Nash. So what if I do? I found a pretty nasty letter from someone named Jane Nash in the Raleigh's desk. That don't mean it was my sister. Hey, you've been snooping, haven't you? In the Raleigh's stuff? In my stuff? Not really. I mean, not technically. My business ain't none of your business. And that includes any sisters I may or may not have. You need to go. I'm busy. The people in the chat are talking about Barbie Riding Club, which is a computer game. Came out in 1998. My sister had it, and and so growing up, I played it a lot because it's like one of three games we had. Don't you be coming around the mountain when she goes? You lay. I can't take any more. Where are you going? You can't leave. The Raleigh said we were to have a cookout and entertain our guest. Yeah, well, I don't call this entertainment. It's worse than whatever that stuff was you cooked. That was lamb ragu for your information, and it was great! If you couldn't appreciate it, it's because your taste buds are about as sophisticated as a sand fleas. I think I'll turn in, too. Night, ma'am. Next time, just stick to burgers. Et tu, Brute? You see that? You see what I put up with? Day in and day out, I cast my culinary pearls before ungrateful, uncultured swine. Well, I'll show them. I'll write a best-selling cookbook, that's what I'll do. Then I'll get my own TV show, then I'll do a movie, and while they're out here punching cattle, I'll become a gazillionaire. Oh my gosh! Ah! It's the Phantom Horse! Ah! 
Alrighty, so that was an exciting right nighttime party. The horse showed up again. The pump house blew just as the horse was galloping away. Oh my, this is awful. Maybe Shorty was right. Maybe that horse is a bad omen. I don't know, maybe the horse was just an evil distraction. I'm more inclined to think that someone is using that horse to divert attention. What do you mean? It's possible that while everyone's attention was on that horse, someone sabotaged the pump house. Why on earth would someone sabotage the pump house? Maybe they're trying to find the secret treasure that I am also looking for. Could someone be trying to get back at you for something? I can't imagine who. Maybe I can find out. You don't think Tex or Shorty or Dave is somehow involved, do you? It's possible, but I just don't know yet. Oh my, you might not be safe there. Maybe we should send her home. I'll be fine, really. I want to help, and I can help. Well, it sounds like we could certainly use your help. Yep, you certainly can, because you're stuck at the hospital. Can you think of any reason why someone might want you off the ranch? No, but I'll tell you what. Ed and I will put our thinking caps on, and if anything comes to us, we'll call you. Have you called the sheriff and told him all this? Not yet. Tell her about the storms. Tell me about the what? The storms. You need to be careful when you go riding, because it can be sunny one minute and pouring down rain the next. I'll be careful. Good. And if you have any more questions, just call. One more thing. Until I figure out what's going on, it would probably be a good idea not to mention my suspicions to anyone at the ranch. Of course. Keep in touch. I will. Bye. Alrighty. We are actually going to have Vegetable Puzzle Part 2. Yes. Yes, you thought you were done with vegetables? No, you're not done. We get Part 2 with Shorty. In a moment, first let's spy in his area. Ooh, what is he looking at? Let's see, he's got a, a stapler. Why does he need a stapler? Mineral he's deposits? Got... He's looking for gold in the hills. Can I help you find something? No, actually, I pretty much found everything on my own. For your information, I got those maps because I was hoping there might be a long lost gold mine or two around here. But, like most of my get-rich-quick ideas, it didn't pan out. Apparently, there's no gold left in them thar hills. Or silver, or copper, or anything else. Now, I don't ever want to catch you in my stuff again. Yes? I'm sorry for being mean. I'm embarrassed that you caught me snooping through your stuff. Just proves we're birds of a feather. I've been known to go poking through other people's stuff myself. <laughs> Actually, Nancy is not sorry. She's just sorry she got caught. Got any chores you want me to do? Do exactly what you did for me yesterday, and I'll be forever grateful. Start by picking all the ripe stuff in the garden again. Basket's outside. Well, I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Alrighty, vegetable picking, part two. Let's see if we can do this. I didn't know thermometers went up that high. Oh, no, it's... What, 88 degrees? That's not so bad. Actually, that, that's that's kind of bad, but, I mean, it's not so bad. And hey, um, there's a rattlesnake. You want to, like, go away, otherwise the rattlesnake will bite you? Ah! I guess maybe you have to go inside, and that will magically make the rattlesnake disappear? Great! Rattlesnake's gone. Okay. So, we learned with the beans that are straight up and down, those are right. Old Ivory, um, I guess it's that one. Northern Lights, they look fine to me. Uh, beef Steak, those are red. And then, with the Black Turtles? Why is that even a type of bean? And that is not what I was looking for. I was looking for... I'm gonna double check those, those veggies. Okay. Do we have like, oh no, we've got these beans. Oh, I see what happens. We've got two different types of beans. So, uh, they look like snap beans. But these ones are the yellow ones. So those are not, what are the varieties? Kidney, Pinto, Turtle, and Green Navy. So turtle, so a turtle, the ripe ones are wrinkly and old. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. 
Well, that's weird that we've got two different types of beans with two different types of like coloring when they're when they're ripe or not. But I think I got it right. Let's see. There's more ripe stuff out there than that. No, there isn't. There is. Okay. Um, uh, this one. I'll pretend that's an ivory egg and not a northern light, and maybe that's it's it. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. There's more rap stuff out oh, there. Oh, come than that. on! No, no, there ain't. There is? Shorty, why don't you get your own darn vegetables, sir? Alright, somebody says there might be Romano beans that I've missed. Well, let's read and see what those Romanos are. It just takes so long to get back to the vegetable things. It's a pain. So Romanos are, are, are these ones. And the beans in the middle are ripe. I guess maybe this is ripe. I don't know, it looks curly to me. I could it's be so wrong. hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. There's more rap stuff out there than that. Shorty, what? Why? No. No. There is? Uh, <laughs> uh. Let's just go with all those Romanos then. Let's say those are all good. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? Take a look. Good for you. Now, if you just fill that egg basket for me again, we'll be all set. Okay. We did it. Finally, we did it. Yay, and no game over sequence. That's nice. Have you ever met Mary Yazi? Of course. Nice lady. I mean, for the most part. Gets real unfriendly when the subject of the Rawleys comes up. What about Dave Gregory? He's so quiet, I can't tell if he's being secretive or just shy. My money's on shy. I mean, it kinda takes brains to be secretive, and he strikes me as being pretty much a lightweight in that department, know what I mean? Oh, Nancy, it's great having you here. I mean, I like to talk, you know? I like to converse, to debate, to discuss. That was really rude of him. He's like, you know what? I think Dave's kind of uh, not so smart, so he, he can't actually keep secrets. He's just too dumb for that. You like to gossip, don't you? More than anything. Which isn't a bad thing. People like you and I are fascinated by the human condition, that's all. So, who else do you want to talk about? Uh, nobody really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody says Shorty is definitely a lightweight in the having hair department. That is true. Have you been out to the pump house? All the water to the ranch house has been cut off. The livestock will still get water from the windmills, but we humans are going to have to get every single drop of water we use from the faucet in the pump house. And that's going to be a royal pain. Why can't that darn horse do its cursed thing somewhere else? I'm inclined to think that someone, not something, is responsible for the damage to the pump house. I saw the pipe. It was rusted through. That's why it burst. That and bad vibes from that equine banshee. Well, I'd better get going. Come back soon. All right, so that's enough of Shorty. I bet he's a fan of eggs because he's a major egghead. Meaning he's bald. Maybe he tries to make a hat out of eggs. I don't know. That seems like it would be a weird decision, but I wouldn't put it past him. Okay, we've got the Chicken of Doom here. Do you want to see the game over sequence with the Chicken of Doom? Ooh, I like how the Chicken of Doom is just moving its head up, left, right, up, down, everything. Actually, Dave is not here today. That is correct. Huh, that's, that's weird. Let me call the sheriff in the, the meantime. Uh, let's see. No, no, yes, yes, no, yes, yes. 
You know, I, 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 I think no wins this poll, actually. More people want to see me live without being killed by the chicken of doom. Hernandez. Hi, are you the sheriff? Yes, ma'am. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm staying at Shadow Ranch. Oh, yeah? I spent a good part of last night out there. Yeah, didn't you see me there? I know. I never got a chance to talk to you. Is there something I can do for you? Thanks for your help. Just doing my job. <laughs> what? It's a silly conversation. No, I'm sorry. I meant to look at this. And that's what I was supposed to do. I was supposed to get permission. Permission to check out that crime scene. Let's see. We got any eggs? Nope. Nope. I don't see any eggs. Anywhere. I'm eggless. Maybe that means I've gotten all the eggs I need for today. Excellent. Well, now let's call Hernandez and get permission to explore. Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew again. Hello, Nancy. What can I do for you? Would it be all right if I looked around in the pump house? Sure. I'm all done in there. Should I have my deputy take that sign down? Mind my asking why you want to look around? Wait a minute. Dave told me about you. You're the girl detective. Amateur detective. I don't know. Dave seemed to be real impressed with you. In more ways than one, I might add. Oh, you're gonna make me blush. Do you know most of the men who work at Shadow Ranch? I know them all. That doesn't mean I'm best buddies with them, but it's a pretty small world out here. And I've either known or known of those boys for years. And they're all stand-up guys, as far as you know? I'd vouch for every single one of them. It's very cute that Nancy... Uh, I mean, that Dave is talking to Nancy uh, about all... Uh, just talking to all his friends about Nancy. Thanks for your help. Just doing my job. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, and we, we can also call the map guy, sure. SWGS, this is Geyser. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. Not too long ago, you provided this person I know with a map that showed the locations of mineral deposits in central Arizona? That's what I'm here for. Is it unusual for an ordinary citizen to request a map like that? Depends on which map it was. The number on it was PUB893A. Publication 893 Alpha. Let me get it on my screen here. Yeah, that's a map somebody'd use if they wanted to go prospecting in their spare time. What's this person's name? Uh, Shorty Thurmond? Shorty Thurmond. Yep, there he is. According to my notes, he'd just started a job in the Shadow Mountain area and figured he'd go looking for gold on his off hours. You keep notes on all the calls you get? In a bureaucracy like this one, you never know. When something goes south and fingers start pointing, it's always good to have your side of the story all nice and documented. Do your notes say anything else? Apparently, this shorty person asked me if I knew anything about Dirk Valentine's treasure. Really? Do you remember what he said? As I recall, he'd heard a rumor that some outlaw had buried some kind of treasure near Shadow Mountain. He thought it might be in an old mine shaft or something. And what did you tell him? Nothing. I didn't know anything about it. Well, thank you, Geza. No problem. What did you say your name was again? Nancy... Drew. Nancy Drew. Asked a lot of questions. Didn't buy any maps. But she really appreciated your taking the time to talk to her. Be sure to put that in your notes too, okay? Got it. Goodbye, Miss Drew. Bye. Alright, so that's... that's Geza. I'd better take these eggs to Shorty before I drop them or something. Ah, forget it, Nancy. Alright, so, uh, the pump house... Guess what? The pump isn't working anymore. It's totally destroyed, which is sad. Looks like the pipe was pretty badly corroded. Yeah, it didn't look that way last night. And we have another arrowhead. Beautiful. But what's this to the left? A secret passage! What? Can't believe it. Just a secret passage here. Guess where it leads? Well, it leads to the basement. Dave? Well, where did you come from? Dave? 
Whoa, 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 uh, what are you doing here? Where did you come from? Well, see, I just, I mean, I'm looking for Dirk Valentine's treasure. Then you lied before when you said you didn't know who Dirk Valentine was. Yes, ma'am. See, my great aunt Ellie was Francis Humber's cousin. When she died, she left me a bunch of stuff, including an old letter she'd gotten from Francis. In the letter, Francis said that Valentine had hidden a bunch of loot somewhere and wanted Francis to find it by following the clues he left for her. Francis was real smart, see? Loved puzzles, played the piano pretty good, too. Anyway, after Valentine met his end, Francis was too brokenhearted to care about some treasure. She told Aunt Ellie that if she could find it, she could keep it. I also found this picture. That's Francis's father, Sheriff Merrill Humber. There's something written on the back. Stairs to cellar. That's Francis's handwriting. Looks like the other half of the message got torn off. I was hoping that the treasure might be under the stairs in here, but no such luck. All right, so we, we saw the other half of that message. It said green bottle under. So green bottle under the stairs to the cellar. How long have you been digging around down here? About a week. Mostly late at night or whenever I could sneak away. I come and go through a secret entrance. These stairs lead to a secret door behind the bookcase in the den. Ooh. The Raleigh's never mentioned a secret door. The Raleigh's don't know. I was afraid that if I told them they'd... See, my brother's dead broke. No job, health's bad. I was thinking if I could just find the treasure... I understand, but now I'm in kind of an awkward position. I know, and I'll tell them, I swear, soon as they come back. They got enough on their minds right now. You haven't been using that phantom horse to try to scare the Raleigh's off so you can hunt for Valentine's treasure in peace? I don't know anything about that horse or any of the other stuff that's been going on around here, I swear. Now, if you'll pardon me, I need to tend to my chores. No, wait, you don't have to leave. You can stay here with me. We can hang out in the basement together. No one needs to know. It'll be our secret. Dave, Dave, Dave is gone. Alrighty. Alright, here's a puzzle. Something's missing. This is gonna be one of those flowers. We need to get the flowers from the favorites, so that's one of them. Acid. Wonder what somebody's been using that for. I believe we're left to assume the culprit used acid to corrode that pipe. Because I think the culprit sabotaged that pipe. Maybe the message on the pictures refers not to the stairs to the den, but to these stairs. Let's see if I can open up these stairs. Maybe I need to step back. Got it. Here's the secret, secret message. But in order to reach it, we need to solve a slider puzzle, I think. Uh, let's see. Moving things around. Lots of pieces that can be moved around, I suppose. Hmm. Yeah, this is a really large slider puzzle. I think we only have to move that to the right once. So what are we going to do here? Just getting myself stuck uh, by just repeating the same actions. Oh no. Uh. That does nothing down there. I don't think we can leave. Yeah, I don't think we can back away and then restart the puzzle that way. I could be wrong. we go. This all the way up, this right, and that right. Got it. There's something inside. 
I am glad that you are getting your picture painted wearing your favorite shawl. It will be a beautiful painting because you look beautiful in that shawl. I forget the name of the stitch you used to make it, but I think it is amazing that you learned how to knit a whole shawl just by reading one book. I wish I could put my mind to things like you can. I am also glad that you like the handbag that I got you. I knew it would become your favorite on account of the pretty picture the beads make. I want to know all the things that you like so that I can make sure you always have them. I figure that way you will always want me around. Meet me on Friday at noon by the big picture rock. I love you, Dirk. So, the shawl, we need to find that shawl picture. And uh, we just sort of saw that little purse, but we couldn't see the flower on it. So that's gonna be a problem. Remember when we were in Cappy's eating the crackers he orders special from California? And you said that from then on the crackers would be your favorite because they would always remind you of me? Well, I met a trader yesterday who had a whole wagon full of them and I bought you four tins. I also bought a rock from him because this rock has been polished to show a picture that looks just like the landscape by one of our meeting places. He called it an agate and said that the picture was made by nature, but it looks so real I can hardly believe it. I am thinking of a way to surprise you with it because it is as special as you are. I will meet you Tuesday at 3 by the three-armed cactus. Your father has people watching for me all over the county. I guess you got some of your smartness from him. I love you, Dirk. I still don't know how you got a whole cake out to our last meeting place like you did, but it was the best thing I ever ate. And the prettiest, too, what with that fancy flower you put on it. Now I think it is the best cake recipe in the world, too. But nothing is as good as getting a letter from you. Whenever I see a flower like the one on your favorite letter paper, I think of you. I only steal from people who have plenty of money to begin with and deserve to be robbed. But if I could start over, I would forget about them and be a rancher or a farmer or miner or shopkeeper or whatever you wanted me to be, just so we could always be together. Be at Charlie's grave at sunset this Thursday. I love you, Dirk. So those are more of the flowers on her favorites. We basically have to solve all those puzzles in order to beat the game. Looks like I'm back in the den. Cool. Wonder how we open that secret passageway. Yes! It's that book. That is the book we need to, to use. Okay. So, the, the shawl. What we need to do is look up that particular stitch, which I think is here. That's an agate. Did I click on the wrong thing? The daisy stitch. Daisy. Okay, it's the daisy. That is the daisy stitch. Hey, we solved one puzzle! relatively quickly got those eggs for me right here good for you i need you to do one more thing it's tex's birthday the raleigh's told me to make him a cake now if i make it he'll throw a fit but if you make it he might actually appreciate it so why don't you dig a cake recipe out of the recipe box and have at it i don't care when you make it just so it's done by the end of the day the icing's already made Fantastic! What do you know about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid around here for Francis Humber to find? If I thought there was a snowball's chance in Tampa that Valentine had stashed any of his loot here, I'd be tearing this place apart. Why? What do you know about it? Nothing really, but what makes you so sure he didn't stash any of his loot here? When I heard that rumor, I started reading everything about Dirk Valentine I could get my hands on. But the more I read, the more it sounded like he suckered Francis into believing he'd hidden something for her, just to give people something to talk about when he was gone. Could I get a canteen of water from you? You betcha. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. Excellent. So we do have to make that cake for text at some point let's see do i need to grab the ingredients might as well make it here first thing i'll need to make that cake is a mixing bowl excuse me where's the recipe can i look at the recipe at the same time as the cake thank you seriously Taking a picture of my phone. That should help. This is gonna be one cup of butter. So 
that's two sticks, apparently. And two eggs. And then a bunch of milk. One and two thirds cup milk. So that's five of these things. One, two, three, four, five. Shorty, you could have just made the cake yourself and then told Tex I made it. I would totally back you up if you did that. Okay, looks like one pint of flour, maybe? Is one pint four cups? Mm, four quarts in a gallon. I don't know. Uh, sugar, two and one three thirds. Okay, so seven things of sugar. Somebody said pint is two cups. Well, in that case, we'll need two pints. Two. Three things of sugar. Uh, okay, I need four more. One. Two. Three. Four. Let's get the vanilla. A one tablespoon baking powder. Mist. Oh uh, man, how many teaspoons are in a, in a tablespoon? Missed. Don't know. Let's go with the vanilla. The vanilla is teaspoons, so three of those. How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Three. Multiple people are saying three. Thank you very much for the help, everyone. You are much better at cooking than I am. So I seem to recall we bake it in the center pan. And then we bake it at like medium. Looks like I'm gonna have to guess how long to cook it and what temperature to use. Try medium at for 30 minutes. How's that? It's not cooked all the way through. I better bake it some more. So then let's try medium for an extra 15 minutes. Perfect. That was it. Maybe I should try a little, just to be sure. I should put that icing Shorty made on it. Tastes delicious. What are these? I made you that flour Frances mentioned in her recipe. I cut all the pieces out of marzipan using her old forms, but I'll be darned if I can figure out how the pieces go. so bad. You can kind of see the outline. Kind of. Not like 100%. It's so clear. Oh my gosh, it's right there, sir. I don't know where that piece goes. Um, let's see. This one's gotta be here. Hmm. Uh-oh. Maybe this piece goes in first. There we go, that's it. Had those little pieces in uh, the wrong order. It's a tulip. What's this? That's food coloring, so you can paint that marzipan flower. That's not so bad. There we go. Nice shadow ranch cake. Beautiful. Way better than making vegetables. But if you get stuck on that, that flower puzzle, it can be a pretty tough puzzle. 
Alrighty, so now we need to go to Tex, and he's going to teach us how to do roping and riding. Not that my family's any of your concern, but my sister did work for the Raleigh's, back in Phoenix. She got fired, she got mad, but she's over it. Okay? I don't know, I saw a pretty angry letter from her. Why didn't you tell me that before? Because it makes me look bad. I figured no one never find out, and when you did, I just got all... flustered-like. So all the bad stuff that's been going on around here... It's not because you're helping her get back at the Raleigh's for letting her go? Fact is, my sister can be kind of a flake. I'd have probably fired her too. Is it okay if I go riding? Nope. Feed the chickens and the horses in the corral first. Could be fatal if you mess up, so don't. Uh-oh. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. This puzzle. Oh, man. Um... We need chicken feed. What's chicken feed is chicken chow. Two scoops of chicken chow. None of these things are labeled. I think this is chicken chow, though. It would be so much better if these were labeled. I don't think that's enough. But that was that was two scoops of it. Is this the chicken chow? Maybe it's chicken chow on the right. Like, why does this game expect me to know what chicken chow looks like? This is tough. I just wasn't being careful. Dave says the chickens have stopped laying and just plain look sick. I know. It's all my fault, Aunt Bet. I can't tell you how disappointed Dave is. He thought you were really coming along. Why, he was all set to talk to Shorty and Tex about thinking up a ranch-type nickname for you. Really? Want to hear the nickname I got for you? No, I don't think I do. Okay, so apparently that was too much chicken chow. And so I murdered the chickens. Really? Chickens can't have just a little bit of extra food today. If, if they do, it, it's instant death. Fine. Hmm. Let's see, do I put the bucket back? Empty the bucket now. Okay, only two scoops of chicken chow. One. Two. Yeah, those chickens will explode if I give them an extra, extra scoop of food. We cannot have those chickens eat more than their appropriate amount. Okay, chickens, come and get it! Yeah, chickens! Great, so they're not dead this time. That's beautiful. Let's try something else. Oh, and I'm told there's like this stuff here. It is pink cattle supplement, so we know the pink stuff is for cows. Ah, uh, so the pink stuff's for cows, and that's for chickens. So we're all done with the right-hand side of this. All done with that. So now we need to figure out the left-hand side, which is oats, corn, and then pellets. I have no idea what that is. No idea what that is. Maybe corn. Kind of looks like unpopped popcorn. So let's see, Bob needs two oats, one corn, well, one and one half, right? So whatever thing is one and one half, that will be the mixed pellets. So let's see what this is. One and one half, that means it must be mixed pellets. So that's mixed pellets. And we want one scoop of corn. 
Um, that's that's a half pound of it, uh, of it, right? That would be a full pound. And next, we want two pounds of oats. That was a half pound. So what it'd be like four? I think I'm wrong. I think this I think I think this is gonna kill poor Bob. Bob seems to like it. No. Uh oh. Didn't Tex tell you that feeding the horses wrong could be fatal? Yes, he did. Tex said that poor horse you fed is colicking. I know. I was just careless. I commend your honesty, dear. But I'm afraid we can't afford to have careless people on the ranch. And since Tex would be quite happy to strangle you right now, what we're going to say next is actually for your own good. Goodbye, Goodbye Nancy. Nancy. Yeah, that that is poor Bob. Bob was my favorite horse too. Alrighty, let's try again. Hmm. Again, this is just like those those vegetables. Nancy has no idea what she's doing. There is no reasonable reason to assume she knows what she's doing. Why can't anybody help her? Alright, let's do two oats. That is in fact two oats. Now I want one corn. So one corn will bring us to three. So I need corn until we're at three. And I want one and one half miscellaneous pellets, or mixed pellets. So I need to get to four and a half here. I hope this works. Not dead! Hooray! We saved, saved our good friend Bob. Saved him from our own deadly food. Oh, and here's the thing about the, the horse's hocks right above the knees. Ah, that is correct. So Ace and Clyde. Uh, Clyde, three oats, and then one thing to mix miscellaneous pellets. Well, that should be easy. Now that we know what the oats are. It's just three scoops of oats. And then one scoop pellet. And that was Clyde, right? That's Clyde. Where'd the music go? Fantastic. Next we want, um, ace, ace. So one oats, half corn, and then three mixed pellets, so. Where is that bucket? Here it is. One oats, three mixed pellets. So that's going to be one, and then two. Two. And then a half corn. Okay, well that's just this. Bob is clearly the best of all the horses here. Clearly. Here you go, Ace. Need 
need something. Has anyone tried going after that phantom horse when it appears? Nope. Always something else going on. Like Ed Raleigh getting snake bit, or the pump house blowing up. Plus, that horse is fast. Probably couldn't catch it anyway. May I go riding now? Oh, Bob's all yours. I set up some barrels and a sawhorse so you can do some barrel racing and practice roping. Whenever you're out there, I'll watch you and time you. If you get good enough, like, say, you get your time below 10 seconds, and if you can lasso the sawhorse, like, say, four times out of five, I'll give you your very own lariat. You can practice as much as you want whenever you want. Just don't go walking off with my rope, because I'll be watching. I'll be watching, and I'll catch you. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. So this is something we need to do, is the, uh, the roping challenge. Oops, I forgot to get his, uh, bridle and stuff. It's right here. Come on, Bob. good like that perfect great timing gotcha great timing again gotcha I'm a real cowpoke Perfect. Congratulations. Excellent. And then I need to go barrel Yeehaw! racing. I just need to click at the right moments. Yeah, yeah. Nine point five. How about that? You do. All right. Now I can get my own lariat. I did the barrel race in under 10 seconds and roped the sawhorse four out of five times. Do I get a lariat? Yep, here you go. I'm kind of surprised at you. Why? Figured you'd be good for some laughs out there. You weren't. But there's still hope. This little vacation of yours ain't over with yet. May I go riding again? Yep. Talk to you later. Yahoo. He says nope so often. He just said yep right then. And I'm like, what? What? I didn't know that word was in his vocabulary. Also really rude of Tex to be like, oh, don't worry. I'm sure I can humiliate you before your vacation's over. Still plenty of time to do that. <laughs> yeah. Meanie. Come on, Bob. All right, let's get going. Looks like Mary Yazi. I'm gonna go to Cougar Bend, and that's going to take a while. It's just a long, long trip to Cougar Bend. You do want to, uh, this is where we solve that one puzzle from really early on. This one! Remember Dirk Valentine said this is where you would have, uh, the various things? Petroglyphs? Well, this is where they are. There's one. I have no idea where this is. That's not right. Because 
I know it's B-E-N-E-A-T, so where's A-T? Here it is. Okay, so that one must be there. I don't know where that V one is. I haven't seen it. Here it is. Oh, it's you. It's you. I already know the secret message. So that helps out a lot. <laughs> up there. Let's see if we can find them. Nope. That was another arrowhead. There's a sun. B E um I don't know, so the sun's on there. Eagle's sort of here. Ow. So the eagle needs to be... There we go. This is just... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody's talking about the like the Nancy Drew TV show and, 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 and stuff like that, and I'm just getting stuck on this puzzle, which should not be a difficult puzzle. Okay, here we go. This is in the corner. Great. If that's the corner there, then that's the bird here next to it. And so the one that's next to it, is there one here? It's going to be this goat thingy. And then next, I guess... There are two here, maybe. I don't know. Like, if this is the sun, and then that's the hand. So it's going to be hand, because hand is technically lower than the sun. Yeah, I watched the first season of the Nancy Drew TV show on the CW, and that was enough for me. I didn't want to watch the second season. I didn't like it enough to want to watch anymore, to be honest. To be honest, if it, if it, you know, didn't have, like, Nancy Drew in the name, I probably wouldn't have watched it. It wouldn't have interested me. I was kind of expecting it to be more of a mystery show, but it's more of, like, a supernatural, scary ghost show. That was more of the focus of the TV show. And yeah, I, I prefer mystery, to be honest. Okay, dancing person over here. We had a couple of, uh, you know, like, a couple of episodes that were really mystery heavy. That's cool. Something that kind of bothered me about that Nancy Drew, uh, TV show is, like, they changed, like, the names of half the characters. I thought that was weird. I thought that was a weird decision. But maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. I need a rope. So, we got the lariat from Tex, so I can use the lariat over here. Missed. Mm -hmm. How did I miss it? Yes! Well, these Nancy Drew games, especially the Nancy Drew games, those are very very big on the fact that, hey, ghosts don't exist. There's no such thing as ghosts. So, it, it just seems weird to have a TV show that's like, no, ghosts are real the whole time. Definitely, obviously, ghosts are real. And the demons are real, and monsters are real. There's a point where it felt like it was a Monster of the Week show. But they eventually tied it all back together. Yes! I think, uh, I did feel like the show would have been better, um, if, if you would binge watch it, because the show aired over the course of the year, so, by the time they, they actually solved the mystery, like, at the end of the season, I'd forgotten all the details of, like, the murder mystery from the first half of the season, because it's like, whoa, it's been months and months and months since I had seen it, so, maybe that's just, I have a bad memory. In fact, that's probably the problem. Okay, birdie birds here. 
dancing people there. Beneath Cappy's keys, Cappy's name, please. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen, all the people who make the show are very nice people. Especially the the one who plays Nancy Drew. She is actually a fan of these Nancy Drew games. I forget which one she said was her favorite at this point. But she she was in fact a fan. Oh access no no accessing my phone? No way, I wanna access my phone. There we go. I'm gonna access my phone. It's a little glitch there that lets you access the phone. Charlene of Purcell's office. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Miss Purcell? She told me to put you right through. She even told me to make sure you didn't have to listen to that recording again. You really raved. Hello, Nancy. So, what have you discovered? I came across a reference to someone whom Dirk referred to as Pappy. Probably his father, Kashmir Valentine. He was a blacksmith over in Prescott. Would Francis have known who he was? Oh, yes. Dirk worshipped his father. Which is ironic, because by the time Dirk was arrested, his father had pretty much disowned him out of shame. Talk to you soon. I'll be waiting. Interesting. Now I'm trying to remember what I need to do at this point in the game. Yes, he has a task list, right? That's done. I'm finished with it. Check. I haven't done that yet. I haven't done that. Yeah, hmm. I haven't done that yet. I'm finished with that. I need to go to Cap. Can't check that off till it's done. I haven't done that yet. Oh no. I'm finished with that. I'm finished with that's done. Hmm. I guess maybe go to Mary's. I don't quite remember what it is I have to do here. Anybody got any clues? Like I should be visiting the ghost town. Somebody says talk to Dave, maybe. Talk to Dave. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. We'll talk to Mary here, but after that I'll talk to Dave. Hi, can I help you with something? Do you know anything about the treasure Dirk Valentine supposedly buried somewhere around Shadow Ranch? I know it's a lot of hogwash. Some people would disagree with you. If I had a dollar for every lost mine or buried treasure story I've heard in the 30-odd years I've lived here, I'd have 10 horses, 2 cars, and possibly my own helicopter. It's nothing but a tall tale. Trust me. I saw you riding earlier near Shadow Ranch. Do you ride around there a lot? You're mistaken. Shadow Ranch is private property. I never ride there. You must have seen somebody else. Whoa, 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 it was you. Whoever I saw was riding a Palomino that looked just like yours. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. So don't go telling people you saw me trespassing, because you didn't. Excuse me. She is super angry. Super angry. Now I'm in trouble. Yeah, I do seem to remember of that, um... Dave tells us about the ghost town, so maybe that's what we were supposed to do. Maybe we were supposed to talk to him before we actually went out on the trail, as it were. Kind of a pain that I have to take off that giant saddle every single time. I'm just stopping in to have like a three minute conversation, okay? I'm gonna be riding immediately after this. Hello, Nancy. Guess I'm gonna be blushing every time I see you now. Don't worry about it. I've been known to do a few sneaky type things from time to time myself. Actually, I'm kind of glad you came by. Something I need you to do for me, if you wouldn't mind. You bet. This chicken coop's been a thorn in my side ever since I got here. The wire I need to fix the hole in the fence was supposed to be delivered today. But it's not here yet, and the Raleigh's just called and asked me to run an errand for them tonight. So if you could keep an eye out for that chicken wire, and patch that hole as soon as it gets here, the chickens and I'd really appreciate it. Sounds good. Will the wire get here before it gets dark? Doesn't look that way. But you still have to put it up, even if it means working at night. Just be sure to wear gloves. I'll leave my pliers out. If you have to do it at night, that's okay. There should be plenty of moonlight. You'll be able to see fine. Just make sure it gets done, because if it doesn't, 
The coyotes are gonna have themselves one heck of a banquet, and you're gonna be in a lot of hot water. No problem. Now, is there something I can do for you? Well, let's see. The jail. He'll tell us about the jail. Where was the jail that Dirk Valentine stayed in after he was arrested? Do you have any idea? Probably the one over in Dry Creek. It's a ghost town now. But the jailhouse and a couple other old buildings are still standing. At least they were last I saw. Could you tell me how to get there? On your way to Miriazzi's, look for the trail on your left that heads towards Shadow Mountain and stay on it till you get there. It's about an hour and a half's ride. This got something to do with the treasure? It might. Well, let me know if you need anything else. I can't believe it's an hour and a half away. That just makes me wonder how long Nancy spends riding Bob. I'm pretty sure I saw Mary Yazzie riding on the Raleigh's property. Have you ever seen her riding around here? Can't say as I have, but then most of my duties require me to stay close to home. Tex, he's the one you ought to ask. May I see that letter you said Francis Humber wrote to your great aunt? Sure, got it right here. When I heard you were a detective, I started keeping it on me. Thought you might snoop through my stuff or something. Thanks for letting me see it. Dearest Cousin Ellie, my beloved Dirk is no more. I shall never see him again. And now you will never see me again, for I am on my way east, there to spend the rest of my life. I will never return to the territory of Arizona, not even when my father, whom I despise with every part of my being, has left this earth. But know this, sweet Ellie. Dirk told me that he had hidden something of great value, and that when all was in place, he would start me in pursuit of it. He was forever inventing fanciful ways to tax my brain. That's the flower, by the way, one of the flowers on her favorites. Dearest cousin Ellie, and was quite clever himself. Then, thanks to my father, he was arrested. Perhaps he wrote me from jail and his note was lost. Or perhaps he grew to hate me. But he never told me how to find what he had hidden, and I am too heartsick to care. If you can somehow find it, it's yours, my dear young cousin. Know, too, that I miss you terribly and always, always will. Francis. P.S. Enclosed is a picture of the vilest man ever born. I'll let you get back to work. Ma'am? Alright, so that, that obviously um, was that picture that he had the half of, that Dave had half of it. Alrighty. Can I go riding now, Tex? Need something? I'm pretty sure I saw Mary Yazzie riding on ranch property. Have you ever seen her riding around here? Nope. When I asked her about it, she denied it, adamantly. Was she hurting anything? Defacing rocks? Setting fires? Threatening some endangered species? It just seemed like she was hiding something, that's all. Sounds to me like you're making a mountain out of an anthill. I wouldn't worry about it. Hey, she was trespassing, dude. May I go riding again? Yep. Talk to you later. If you last that long. Yeah, well. He doesn't seem to care that Mary was around. Long as she's not breaking the law, I don't care. I only stop lawbreakers myself. Here we Come on, go. Bob. So now we'll go to the ghost town. <laughs> so it's gonna take us an hour and a half to reach this area. just a bird. We have two arrowheads here as well. Let's see. Here's the jail cell. Ooh, those look like gold bars. They're probably bricks, though. It's locked. So much for finding out what Dirk left in the cell for Francis. Phooey. Okay. Well! Ooh. Creepy music. Trying to find that area. Uh, here we go. Or not. What is this? It's a crank for a random whatever that is, teapot. 
Oh, and there we go. There's an arrowhead, but is protected by a very scary scorpion. So I'm just gonna leave and come back later. Is the other arrowhead here? It's here. Okay, scorpion be gone. There we go. Those are both the arrowheads. Now I have all 10 arrowheads in the game. And the sheriff refuses to let me do this. So I think what I do is I, I click on email, then this one on the right. Yeah, so center and then right. That lets me that lets me make a phone call, even though I'm supposed to be out of range of any cell phone towers. Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew again. Hello, Nancy. What can I do for you? I noticed that you put a lock on one of the buildings in the ghost town. Yeah, the support beams in there are about to go. I was afraid some dumb tourist did knock into one of them and bring the thing down, and I'd wind up having to dig them out. If I'm real careful, do you think I could have the combination? It's just an old shack. There's nothing to see in there. I'm just curious. Amateur detective, remember? I'll lock the place back up when I'm done. Well... You swear you'll be careful. I'll be extremely careful, I promise. Let's see, where did I put that combination? Ah, here we go. Nine, two, seven, four. Thanks for your help. Just doing my job. Got it. So, nine, two, seven, four. Yeehaw! So we are here. An electrician's manual. Wonder what that's doing here. Have to take a look at that manual or else the game will not uh, progress. And cashmere. Looks like I need to put in a password. That was what Charlena said. So beneath Cappy's keys, Pappy's name, please. Mirror. All right, so now we need to spell out mirror. It looks like I've got it wrong. Oh dear. Need to press these keys in a specific order. Oh man, really? All right. Oh dear. Alrighty. Here, got it. Got it. Cashmere. Take your forks and a crank to the BDI's ranch and make sure you see what's below. When you stick the forks in and give it a spin, off toward my treasure you'll go. Yeehaw. Take your forks and a So that is a tough puzzle. We'll be solving that puzzle later Looks on. Looks like someone's been hanging out in here. Yeah, the bank robbers have been hanging out in there. Ah, you know, bank robbers. Even the crumbs are crisp. So she liked the flour on those crackers. Cappy's crackers. Interesting. I need to find that thing. So we can call Charlena and ask her about those crackers. I'm getting a definite feeling I'm not alone. And BDI is Ranch is here. I'll bet Dirk Custom made this, which means I better not go mess. I saw a design just like that in Cappy's. Maybe I'm supposed to do something with it there. Yep. Nancy's got this figured out. So that's the, the, the BDI's ranch, but we still need the forks, which are the tuning forks in Mariazzi's. Hi, can I help you with something? Have you by any chance ever come across any silverware that may have belonged to Dirk Valentine's girlfriend, Francis? Silverware? You know, knives and spoons and forks? I'd remember if I did because I would have sold it. 
Silverware from the 19th century would be pretty valuable. It was great talking to you. Come in again. Okay, I need to find the forks here, I guess. Tuning forks. Maybe Dirk meant tuning forks. Yeah. Hi, can I help you with something? I noticed some tuning forks over there. Would it be okay if I borrowed them for a while? Tell you what, if you go out and find me 10 arrowheads for this display I'm working on, I'll give them to you for free. You can put them in this. I already have 10 arrowheads, see? So you do. It looks like I only need nine to finish this display. So here, keep this arrowhead. Thanks for your help, Nancy. Those tuning forks are all yours. It was great talking to you. Come in again. Which arrowhead did she let me keep? That one? Why? I don't know. Anyway, we, we have the tuning forks. I believe that's all that matters here, right? Hey, there's a car. I thought I heard a car. Hey, maybe the car can take me here. I do wonder where where is Bob eating and drinking? Bob probably needs some something to drink, right? Because I just traveled that hour and a half thing three times. That pathway three times. Gonna have to travel the fourth time to go back home. So that's... Gosh, that's six hours of riding just to this, this one spot. This outline reminds me of something. Alrighty, tuning forks here. Hmm... Or not. Hmm, let me see. Do I put the crank in first? Alright, and now we got the forks. So we're gonna spell out her name. Francis. And spin the crank. I think that's it. Huh? Is that not it? F R A N. C E S Nah, here we go. Now go and peek beneath zebra rock, but you'll need a magnet what's there to unlock. Okay, well, six hours is enough for poor Bob. Let's just go back home. Back to Shadow Ranch. And if that I'm... looks like Mary Yazzie and Tex? Woo! Mary Yazzie and Tex together? Oh my. So if I'm correct, this should be the end of day number two of the game? That should be it. Meaning day number three is going to be our final day of the game. If I've done everything correct. Tex isn't here because he's meeting his secret girlfriend, Mary. Huh. Yep, it's evening time, everybody. Love is in the air. Let's see, what do I do? I think Nancy goes back inside here? Tex must have turned the horses out for the night. Horses are gone. Just grab my gloves. And I fix the thingy here. Yep, alright, we have this puzzle. So this is a basic jigsaw puzzle. Alright, let's see what piece goes here in the upper right. That doesn't go there. <laughs> that doesn't go there. That goes somewhere else, says Nancy. Does that go there? That goes there. I have no idea where that piece goes. This looks like a rather large piece on the left hand side. This goes here. Beautiful. That looks right. Yes. Weird.
weird ranch sounds late at night. That doesn't go there. Well, I mean, I wasn't trying to put it on the board, Nancy. I was trying to put it to the side. That looks right. Excellent. That looks right. We're totally done with the puzzle. There. Sorry, coyotes. No chicken dinner for you tonight. Oh my gosh, my gloves. They're glowing. That powder in that ghost town. That's why you needed to touch that book with your gloves. The power lines going to the ranch house were either cut or were otherwise disconnected from the house. You mean you don't have electricity? We have a generator. It's pretty noisy, but it sure beats the alternative. But listen to this. When I was exploring the ghost town, I got this powdery stuff all over my gloves. And last night, when it was dark, my gloves were glowing. Glowing? Like the horse? Exactly like the horse. Maybe it glows because someone rubbed some kind of phosphorescent powder all over it. And if you found that stuff in the ghost town, that must be where he or she has been hanging out. Looks like our saboteur definitely has an accomplice. So what are you going to do? You know darn well what she's going to do. She's going to go back out to the ghost town by herself immediately, if not sooner. And another thing, Dave was suspiciously absent during all the excitement last night. You better be careful, Nancy. If he and whoever's out at the ghost town are working together, they may decide you're a threat. Alrighty, so Nancy's not going to go to the ghost town right away. She's going to do vegetable puzzles first. I'll be okay. I'm more worried about you guys. Well, the fog has finally lifted, and they say we will definitely get out of here today. What they won't say is when. I found an old beaded handbag that may have belonged to Francis Humber. Was there anything in it? No, but if it's the bag that Dirk mentioned in one of his love letters, it could hold some sort of clue. What does it look like? Well, there's a bird on it, but the beads have completely fallen off this one section. However, it does have the name of the manufacturer at the bottom. It was made by the Chicago Mercantile Company back in 1881. That's one of the companies in my book. Is there anything else on it? Yeah, some kind of number. HB3941. Maybe that's what bead pattern it is. There's a bunch of phone numbers in this book. Maybe we can track down the pattern for you. That'd be great. Like I said, it could be pretty important. Especially if the part that's missing turns out to have something to do with flowers. We'll get right on it. That's it for now. Thanks for calling. Bye, Nan. Alrighty, so let's talk to Shorty. I bet he has more chores for us. Nancy, I figured after last night you'd be long gone. I know I would be if I were you. When the power company turned off the power, did they say when they'd be out to fix the lines? No. They had no idea when they'd be able to send somebody out here. And if that generator goes, I could be cooking in the dark for days. Weeks. Well, not weeks, because no way am I staying here that long. I'm so freaked out now, I'm not sure I can last one more day. Oh, come on, Shorty. Don't be a wimp. You can't leave, Shorty. That's exactly what whoever's behind all these accidents wants. Listen to you. Cool, calm, optimistic. I'm a wreck and you're a rock. Of course, you're also dead wrong and totally deluded, but I'm still impressed. Want me to do anything before I go riding? Same old, same old. If you bring me all the ripe stuff from the garden, I'll give you a basket to fill up with eggs. And once you're done with that, you'll be good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. Alrighty, so, final round of the vegetables. Let's see if we can do this. That horseshoe wasn't there before. Whoa! Maybe the ghost horse threw it while it was running away last night. Cool, we have the horse's horseshoe. Let's see, the Romano... I forget which one the Romano was. Let's see. Northern Lights. Let's say those are Northern Lights. Beefsteak Red. Golden Queens look golden. Was Black Turtle the one that had the, the weird wavy... The weird wavy thing? Excuse me. So, yeah. 
mono is just straight up and down. So Black Turtle was the weird wavy one. Okay. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables for me yet? You betcha. Good for you. Now, if you just fill that egg basket for me again, we'll be all set. Woo! No vegetable problems. Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. Alrighty. We did it. No vegetable problems at all. Alright, let's see if we can find all these eggs. That's two, three, four, five. I think the sixth one is under the Chicken of Doom. So let's go back inside. Give the Chicken of Doom some time to rest from its evil, evil plots. And yes, now we have the Chicken of Doom's egg. The Egg of Doom, perhaps? I don't know what we call it. Hello, Nancy. Thanks for fixing that fence. What can I do for you? Um, I don't think we have anything. I'll let you get back to work. Ma'am? I know at some point we're gonna look at a ring or something that he's hiding. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good for you. Anything I can do for you now? Could I get a canteen of water from you? You betcha. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Pleasure talking to you. Oh, also the cake. Yummy. Do you think I could have a piece of cake? Sure. Help yourself. Tex really liked it, by the way. Mm. Mm, Tex liked my cake. Yep. So, Tex... Happy birthday, buddy! Wish I could have attended your party. It sounds like Nancy didn't. Need something? Is it okay if I go riding? Nope. I took a bridle apart, oiled the pieces, and left them in that can on the shelf. You can't ride till you get the bridle put back together right. I put the bit next to the can. Did I see you and Mary Yazi riding together? Me and Mary Yazi? Of course not. Why, well, I ain't said more than ten words to her since I got here. You're imagining things. And you're lying. I found a horseshoe outside that wasn't there yesterday. I was thinking that maybe the phantom horse threw it. It's got a rock wedged in it. So it does. Looks like the kind of rock you'd find out by the ghost town. So, you've been out to Dry Creek? Yep. Last time I was out there, my horse acted real strange. Even tried to throw me. Was like he saw something I couldn't, something he didn't like. Something that was telling him to stay away. You're not suggesting he saw a ghost, are you? I'm just telling you what I know. You don't want to hear what I got to say, then quit asking me stuff. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. Well, you just gotta stop saying weird stuff. I won't question what you're saying. Okay, there's the headstall. Now, let's see. I don't even know what a headstall is. I'm getting there. No, that's not it. That looks right. Yay. I'm getting there. Hooray. I think maybe it's this thing. I'm getting there. Yes. This goes here. Perfect. Fixed it. Fixed it, Tex. Need something? I put that bridle back together. Now may I go riding? Yep. Talk to you later. If you last that long. I forgot to grab a magnet. We need to grab that magnet from Shorty, because that was the last clue. An attractor of metal, meaning a magnet, will unlock something. Let's see what it unlocks.
Come, Bob. Zebra Rock was trail stop. Do 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 do. I'm pretty sure Texas is his nickname, not his real name, but I could be wrong about that. So Zebra Rock is this one. <laughs> Oh yeah, this puzzle. Okay, so we want to get the things into place. So pink, blue, red. Yeah, oh wait, those are the exact same colors. I... Um, give me a second here, everybody. Come on. Okay, my computer's not, not cooperating with me. Okay, fine. So how are we supposed to know which spot which which thing goes in what spot? That will attract metal. I have my magnet. This is a very picky puzzle. So here we go. My notes say that um, this copper piece goes over here, and then the iron piece. So it's going to be copper, iron, silicon. And then manganese, so copper, iron, silicon, manganese. Let's see if I can remember that. Come on, come on, magnet piece. Oh. It's tough because we've got those boards in the way. Okay, got that piece down there. Because I think there's a, like a board right there in the middle. Yes. All right, what do you think? Left. Okay, got that. Please let there be a nice pathway there. Okay. Oh, man. Give me a moment. Got terrible bots in the uh, chat. Let's see if we can get rid of them. Like, why is YouTube not automatically blocking this person? I could have sworn I've blocked the these bots forever. Hmm. Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll just do the cheat here to make those boards disappear. There we go. It's still a difficult puzzle without those boards. But slightly easier without the boards. Copper. Great, that's copper. Some iron, as I was trying to do. upper left I think that's what that element is MN right manganese this is not a very fun puzzle yeah I feel like there could have been a way to improve this puzzle make it way better or at least make it not so terrible I would settle for that really I wouldn't need to make it better, just make it less awful.
Manganese. Silicon, let's go. Yeah, because even with those boards gone, it's still a pretty awful puzzle. Done. That gives us this. That puzzle for the flowers on your favorites! Yay! Alrighty. And Dry Creek. So flowers on the favorites. Um... really do make this a little tough, so it's hard to figure it out. Let's see, I think we go in here. Nancy goes to the corner. Maybe this is the key to the jail cell. And the culprits left out a key. Uh. Oh. Ow! I'm in the jail cell. Well, that's not good. Ooh. This is a tough one. Okay, so this is a puzzle. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 21. So, it's a letter? That's not it. V? That's not it. That's not it. No, okay, let's go with... That's not it. 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 You. So far, so good. Oh, under. I'm getting there. Under B A, because those those are just the numbers of letters of the alphabet. Bank. Lamp. Very good. Very good. You're a good boy. You solved the puzzle so well. Under bank lamp. I feel like Nancy's just being mean to me. These old bricks must be good. I have enough of those. I'll bet that's the key. So there's the key. Luckily, the culprits moved the key for me. That's nice. I'm gonna lasso this. Oh, almost. You can do it, Nancy. Now I'm gonna throw this here. Oh, wrong angle. Wrong angle, maybe too much force. It's hard to tell, yeah. Okay, right, right amount of force. Excellent. So that drops the key and I can use the key to escape. Come to Mama! Great. Ah, grabbing the key, using it here. Whoever clobbered me must have dropped this. To hide a message, take the last two letters of a word, reverse them, and then add them to the start of the word. Use these pictures in place of the word. Anyone talks about this, they get a load of buckshot. To hide a message. So that is Dirk's secret secret code, which the culprits happen to be following. So underneath underneath the bank lamp is here. There's a letter down there. Did you know you can play some games more than one way? You can, and I'll tell you how. Use the ring that's the twin of Ellie's your cousin in Cappy's fun machine now. So we need to get that ring, that ring, it's the twin of the cousins, and Dave was the one who knew the cousin, or he's related to the cousin, so we need that ring from, from him. 
Alright, so let's get this puzzle done. We need the red on top. We need the marzipan flower over here. Come on, marzipan. Marzipan. There we go. White flower over here in the bottom left. Rose in the center. That one there. And that one there. Looks like a secret compartment. If you hope this task to ever complete, you must wind her up so she'll move her feet. Fantastic. And that's basically going to be the match of this puzzle. Alrighty, so let's let's go get it. Let's go get it. is another case where it's like, I'm just going to be in here to talk to Dave for like three seconds. Do I really need to take off that that saddle? Can't I just leave it on the horse for five minutes? Nope, because if you do, you get a game over. Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? Did your great aunt, by any chance, leave you a ring? Sure did. It was her most prized possession. In fact, I got it right here. Seems to me Aunt Ellie said Francis had one just like it. I keep it on me for good luck. I know this is a lot to ask, but do you think I could borrow it for a while? Borrow it? What for? It's kind of a long story. Just take care of it, okay? Will do. Last time I was in the ghost town, somebody clobbered me over the head and locked me up in the old jail. That's terrible. Did you see who did it? No, but I have a sneaking suspicion it may be bank robbers who've been using the town to lie low. You shouldn't go there anymore, Nancy. Something bad's obviously going on, and you should just stay away. Hey, and hey, And call hey. the sheriff, of course. Hey, hey, I, I, I'm fine. I'm good. I'll let you get back to work. Ma'am? Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? I'll let you get back to work. See you later. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I don't know if we're going to talk to Dave. I feel like the rest of the game is solving puzzles out, 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 outside. Not, not, not talking to Dave. Alrighty. Maybe we'll have to come back here. I'm not come sure. Come on, Bob. Let's go riding. Something goes here. Something goes here. The ring, I think. Okay, you put the ring in there, and then that gives us the game. So, we are going to save here. Because this, this game does take a while to solve. It's mostly just random luck. So, I put this in. Try to get all four of them on the, the first time. Okay. Missed all of them. I'm going to keep playing this game until I win, darn it. Yeah. So, if you don't load, what you have to do is go back to Mariazzi's and win that, that coyote game for another token. 
which takes forever. Okay, we've got some nice people. One, two, three. We're gonna save those three nice people and get a nice person here. Yay! We did, and we got the wind-up key, and that is the key for here. You must wind her up so she'll move her feet. On the paper you got when you first began, draw lines between the pictures shown here. If you draw them in order, you'll find something you need behind the picture that you make appear. On the paper you got when you first began, draw lines between the pictures shown here. If you draw them in order, you'll find something you need behind the picture that you make appear. Um, oh man. I need to read. I, I need to memorize the, the, the pictures? Okay. No. Oh, it's a little hard inventory, the inventory trying to make this happen. game really does let you make, like, terrible moves, does it? Huh. Alrighty, we're gonna, we're gonna solve this correctly. Um, hmm. We start here. Start with this one. V. For Valentine, no doubt. Excellent. And so that's the symbol that we are creating. People are debating how old Dave is. Early 20s, maybe? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd agree with that. Early 20s. Nancy. Uh. Uh. Really? Uh. Why am I so bad at this? I, I, hmm. Okay, it's got to be a perfect circle. Uh. Well, that was just terrible. Nancy, yeah, so you should probably just give up. Ta-da! <laughs> Cheers after trying, like, five times. At Charlie's grave, hold this up, look around, and you'll see the trail to a gift to you from me. It's a rock. Too bad it's so scuffed up. It's very scuffed up. All right. end of the game. We're, we're near the end of the game. I feel like we should go back to the ranch and talk to everybody there. Just because this will be our last opportunity before we reach the end of the game. Hi, can I help you with something? Tex told me about, you know, you and him. He did? Yeah, I kind of tricked him into telling me. I don't believe it. He swears me to secrecy, then goes blabbing it to some teenager? Oh well, it was bound to come out sometime. That's kind of what Tex said too. I mean, we're in love. 
What's the big deal? You're what? Wait a minute. He didn't tell you anything, did he? You tricked me. Oh, you're good. You are good. Why do you think you have to keep your love for each other a secret? Tex knows the Raleigh's and I have been arguing about that property I want to buy. He's afraid if the Raleigh's find out about us, they'll think he's collaborating with the enemy and fire him. The Raleigh's wouldn't do that. I think the real reason Tex wants to keep it a secret is because he's got this rough, tough loner thing going. I think the idea of changing his image scares him. Knowing Tex, that does make sense. Anyway, Tex and I are in love. We tried to keep it a secret, and we blew it. You know, for a city slicker, you got a lot of country smarts. Yep, I'm a smart person. It's so cute that Mary and Tex are in love. I think that's sweet. Why are you so interested in buying that property from the Raleigh's? There's a whole bunch of petrified wood on it. Tex discovered it. Every so often, he'll bring some pieces in, and I'll use it in my jewelry or try to sell it. I found this piece of rock in the desert. I'd really like to get the scuff marks off of it. Looks like it's been polished before. If I put it in a polisher, it'll buff up in no time. Let me see what I can do. It's a picture agate. Great. Thanks, Mary. It was great talking to you. Ride safely. All right. So, that's it for Mary. Hello? We're booked on a flight to Phoenix. Oh, right. The bad news is, the flight's been delayed. Oh, no. Why? The plane that's supposed to fly us out of here is sitting on a tarmac in New Jersey waiting to take off. It's like 93rd in line or something. So what are you doing, Nance? Have you figured out who's behind the sabotage yet? Not yet, but I think I am getting close to finding Dirk Valentine's treasure. All I have to do is go where the picture on this agate takes me and I'll be all set. The picture on this what? It's a long story. I'm tempted to ask you to wait until George and I get there, but I know that'd be like asking an Olympic speed skater to slow down. Just be prepared to tell us all about it. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have fun. Wish you were here. Kidding. Alrighty, let's see. I did not call the Hardy Boys yet. Yes, I did not. What is it this time? Uh, excuse me? Nancy, hi. Sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Am I calling at a bad time? Hey, Nancy. Hi, Frank. I thought you were this guy we're doing some work for. You guys are on a case? That's great. No, it's not. Turns out the guy is a bit neurotic. What does he want you to do? He wants us to track down his missing laptop. He left it in a restaurant. Only he keeps calling us. Yeah, like every two minutes. He's become a real nuisance. Maybe you should just quit. Can't. Of course you can. The guy's filthy rich. And if we find that laptop, he said he'd make us filthy rich. But the real reason we can't quit is he's the son of our mother's best friend. Yeah. If we quit, we'd never hear the end of it. Uh-oh, we've got another call. Let him leave a message for the nine millionth time. So, Nancy, tell us about the ranch. I'm positive that whoever's been hanging around the ghost town is connected to all the stuff that's been happening at the ranch. What makes you say that? The goose egg on my head, for one thing. Somebody knocked me out, then tried to make me a permanent inmate at the jail. Congratulations! You're making somebody nervous. It means you're on the right track. So, in your twisted world, Joe, being a victim of foul play is a good thing? The best. I mean, if you're a detective. And if you've got a hard head, which you obviously do, but in a good way. Speaking of hard heads, believe it or not, there's a helmet built into the cowboy hat I borrowed from Bet Raleigh. And somebody still managed to knock you out? I think they whipped it off my head just before they clobbered me, but I really don't remember. Sounds like whoever it was was very determined. You are making somebody sweat. I'm impressed. Mary polished that agate for me, but when it comes to knowing what to do with it, <laughs> I need a hint. Go stand on Charlie's grave. He won't mind. After all, people used to sit on him all the time. Then just compare what you see from there with what you see on the agate. Then be ready for anything. Because something tells me you're getting close, Nancy. Real close. Catch you later. Adios. Happy trails. So the Hardy Boys say they're going to be rich when they solve the case. They're obviously not super rich in other games, so that's not what happens. Did they not solve the case, or was that guy just lying? He was probably just lying. Yeah.
Let's talk to everybody here, and that Need should something? be it. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. Can't talk to Tex about a secret girlfriend? Why not? I want to talk to him about that secret girl. Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? It seems that Mary Yazi and Tex have a thing for each other. Tex and Mary Yazi? You gotta be kidding me. That's what Mary said. I don't think she'd lie about something like that, do you? Stranger things have happened, I guess. And the human heart never does seem to play by the rules. <clears throat> uh, you got a steady back home? Steady? You mean boyfriend? Uh, well, sort of. But what about you? Do you have a girlfriend? Never mind. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. Forget I said anything. So what else can I do for you? Okay... Why do you want to know if Nancy has a boyfriend or not, Dave? Are you hoping to be her boyfriend? I'll let you get back to work. See you later. And wow, Nancy calls Ned her sort of boyfriend? Ouch! Ouch! Wow, don't say that in front of Ned. You'll hurt his feelings. Miss Nancy, how may I be of service? Oh, well... Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. I guess... I guess that conversation with Dave was the only conversation we could have back here. Don't worry. Definitely worth coming all the way back here. To have Dave awkwardly ask, Hey, Nancy, do you, uh... <clears throat> you got a steady back home? Alrighty. So. Now... Now we can on, start bud. the end game sequence. We've got our picture <laughs> agate. We just need to go to Charlie's grave. As the Hardy Boys indicated, this is the... Charlie, the best mule what ever lived. Oh, a couple people are saying I need to call the Raleigh's. I guess I can do that. Come on, Bob. Let's see if the Raleigh's actually can be called here. I bet they can. I'll just use the glitch to call them. Hello? Hi, Aunt Bet. I forgot to ask you before how Uncle Ed was doing. Well, he definitely has some kind of infection. I'm fine. So they've got him on antibiotics. We'll be here at least two more days. Wow, poor Ed. He's going to be in the hospital for like a week. Did you by any chance send Dave on an errand last night? No. Are you sure, Aunt Bet? It's kind of important. I'd remember if I sent Dave on an errand last night, Nancy, and I don't, so I didn't. I sent him on an errand. To do what? You don't want to know. Yes, I do. You don't want to know, Bet. Yes, I do, Ed. Aunt Bet. Aunt Bet. It sounds to me like Uncle Ed may be trying to surprise you. As a matter of fact, my birthday's in two days. So you think maybe he sent Dave out to get you a present? He better have. <laughs> Let's whisper and hope the man standing right next to us doesn't hear anything. I delivered that envelope to Mary Yazi like you asked. She seemed a little upset when she read that you'd turned her down. I'm sorry to disappoint her, but if we sell that property to her, it would send a signal to other would-be buyers that we're interested in selling the ranch off bit by bit, and we're not. Is that the first time she's tried to buy it from you? She's been after us to sell it to her practically since the day we arrived. That was her first formal offer. I guess she thought if she put it in writing, we'd accept. Why does she want it so bad? I have no idea. The parcel she wants to buy is nowhere near her store, and there's nothing but rocks on it. Maybe someone else there at the ranch knows, but we sure don't. I'll be in touch. We'll be right here. Bye. Alrighty, those are the Raleigh's. So, Charlie, best mule whatever was. Just look at his grave, and do we see anything? Right here. That tree looks just like the one on the agate. I think I'll grab Bob and head out in that direction. So Dave was buying a secret birthday present from Uncle Ed. That's nice. I mean, Aunt Bet. Well, he's buying a secret birthday present for somebody. And here we go. Now, how am I going to get up there? Get to go I could lasso that tree dwellings. branch and pull myself up. Yeah. 
Yes! Way to go, Nancy! Ancient cliff dwellings. Awesome! Woohoo! So this is Dirks, and what you want to do is follow those. This is kind of a tough puzzle because because you need to follow the colors. This is brown, lime, and then the other colors. Where was the notes? Yellow, red, blue. To hide a message. But you also need to find key parts. So there's one brown here, and then lime. Is there a key part here? No. Key part here. So you kind of have to deviate a little bit from those instructions. You do. All right, orange room. Where's the orange room? That's, that's the big deviation, I think, actually. The orange one? The orange one. Okay, so it's brown, lime, and then I want yellow and red, wherever that may be. Where's yellow? Here's yellow. Yellow? Red. There's a key part. Blue. Orange. Lime. Yellow. I mean, uh, here it's just a one-way path, so I don't really need to read them all. Loud, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Yellow, uh, brown, blue, lime. Brown, blue, and then lime. Orange, blue, brown, and then a key. Orange, blue, brown. Where's that key? here. It's tough to find key, isn't it? You kind of have to spin around. All right. Orange. No, the lime orange. And then red and blue. This is empty. All right. Red and blue. Yellow. Lime. Blue. Key. Yikes! Falling down there would not be fun. That would not be fun at all, would it? You can take those, like, markers off. Look at them. They're cool. Okay, I think I can do the rest on my own. I think this is it. Alrighty. So... This is yellow. This is it. This is the final one. We want to put in all the keys, and we'll do it. So you need to guess who the culprit is, if you don't already know who the culprit is. Because we're going to figure out who the culprit is in just a moment. This goes here. Because the culprit this follows goes Nancy here. this whole time this to goes find here. the treasure. This goes here. This goes here. Francis Hart. Ah, oh, and he made his little V symbol everywhere. There it is. Dirk Valentine's treasure. Solid gold hearts. Cool. So we found the treasure. I think that's it. Uh-oh. Why, hello, Nancy. Find the treasure yet? So you're the one who's been sabotaging the ranch. That's right. Here my buddies and I went to all that trouble. Wrangling that horse, busting that pipe, cutting those wires trying to scare people off the ranch so we could tear the place apart looking for the treasure. When all we really had to do was what I just got done doing. Follow you. You went to a lot of trouble for nothing. The treasure's gone. Well, now, I don't believe you, Miss Nancy. 
Oh, and by the way, it's too far to make it back to the ranch without a horse, and I just ran yours off. Which means you, to use an old cooking expression, are toast. That's what you think. Looks to me like the only way out is the way you came in, Nancy. So, ready or not, here I come. People in the chat are asking for me There's to do the death scene. There's gotta be a way to stop scene. Shorty. Think! I'm getting close! The death scene is kind of scary, but yeah, I can show it. Man, how could Nancy escape? Like... There's gotta be a way to stop Shorty. Think! Just went through another door, Nancy! I kind of wish she tried running on top of these buildings. You know, running on top of them might have been a cool escape. Went through another one! Only four to go! Here's Shorty. Yeah, yeah. Looks to me like the only way That's out is the, the way you scene. came in, Nancy. So, ready or not, here I come. So the death scene kind I'm of limits... Close. Quiet, Shorty. I'm trying to talk. Sort of limits how far you can go, because I can't leave here and I can't leave here. Well, in that case, just went through another door, Nancy. the final puzzle must be in this room. I'm going to mix these two colors. That way, Shorty walks here. Went through another one. Only four to go. There. Now I better hide. Last door. After I get the treasure, I'll deal with you. Whoa! You switched door markers on me, didn't you? That was downright mean, Nancy. I could have hurt myself. At least you can do is help me off of here. How about it? Nah, I think I'll go get the sheriff and let him help you off of there. Dear Hannah, it turns out that Shorty had ridden to the cliff dwellings on the Phantom Horse, which was really just a trick horse that a friend of one of his bank robber buddies had trained. Since my horse was gone and it was getting dark, I wound up riding it back to the ranch so I could call the sheriff. You should have seen the look on everyone's face when I rode up on a glowing horse. It looks like the phosphorescent powder that they used to make it glow was harmless, but Tex is taking care of the horse until he's sure it's okay. Mary Yazzie has straightened everything out with the Raleigh's, and now she comes over a lot, mostly to see Tex. He turns beet red whenever she's around. It's actually kind of cute. Speaking of cute, Dave confessed to the Raleigh's as soon as they got home from the hospital, just like he said he would. They not only forgave him, they even offered to split the treasure with him if it turns out they can keep it. Sheriff Hernandez is looking into it. The best part is, Bess and George finally got here, and we've been having a ball. Here's a picture of the three of us on our horses. Unfortunately, Dave took it. Guess he didn't realize his finger was over the lens. <laughs> See you in a couple of days. Love, Nancy. P.S. I started reading the Charlena Purcell novel Aunt Bet has, and you know what? I can't put it down. Everybody likes Al. Nancy says, speaking of cute, Dave. Dave is cute. Dave is very cute. Whoa. Nancy, oh my. And I am a Hawkeye. I read everything I could. Woohoo. If dreams can come true, what about curses? Well, in my next mystery adventure, you can find out for yourself, if you dare. I've been invited to a creepy old castle in England to find out who or what is terrorizing its residents. Could it be that the spirit of a centuries-old witch has returned to seek revenge? And why, after 300 years, has the Beast of Blackmoor returned to prowl the moors again? The answers to these and many other dark secrets will be uncovered in my next case, The Curse of Blackmore Manor. People are wondering if Bob is okay. I think Bob is okay. Dave went out, Dave and Tex found Bob, and they brought him back home just fine. I feel like Nancy might have mentioned something, like if her horse had died. That's the sort of thing Nancy... I don't know if Nancy would mention that at the end of the game. That would be a very sad, terrifying note to end the case on. Yeah, nah, um, hmm. Still, I think Bob's okay. Bob is basically the hero of the game. 
Bob is so fantastic. There is no way Bob was hurt. Bob was just sort of scared away a little bit. I guess, I don't, I don't know, like, we have that picture of uh, the three girls on their three horses. Did they match up perfectly with the three horses in the game? Did they match up perfectly with Bob, Ace, and Clyde? Artist Nancy just ride the phantom horse from now on. Just ride, she rides the phantom horse all the time. Same person played Francis Humber and Bess Marvin. That's very interesting, yeah. Of course, Joan of Von Spreken played four characters. Shorty, the mineral map guy, the radio voice, and Charlena's assistant. Oh, hey, and Julie Raleigh played Charlena Purcell. Well, why didn't she play one of the Raleigh's? That, that probably would have been a great idea for her. Alright, so I think that that is the end of the live stream. Thanks for watching, everybody. Wow, I had a lot of people here. Looks like we've got about 206 people right now. But overall, uh, 1,745 views. It says average view duration is 28 minutes and 25 seconds. Oh, wow, most people stuck around for like a half hour. Thanks a lot, everybody. That's... That's quite a compliment. And the chat rate, I don't know what that means, but we've got a chat rate of 50, so what? There are 50 messages in the chat every minute or so? That's that's kind of a lot, actually. But I, I didn't feel like the chat had so, so many comments that it's impossible to follow what's going on, because I've definitely seen live streams where there are like thousands of people commenting all at the same time, and it's kind of impossible to read. So, thanks for everybody for, for watching the game. Thanks for being nice and friendly in the chat. I feel like this was a lot of fun for everybody. So, you guys have a nice day, everyone.